And so when I say Chinese, I want you to scream out the, na the nation that's associated with this. For example, if I say Chinese, you're going to say what? China. All right, let's say it with authority. When I say Chinese, you say what? China. All right, that's just a, a test right there. So here we go. Chinese. China. Russian. Russia. Italian. Italy. German. German. Swedish. Swedish. Korean. Korean. Egyptian. Egypt. Nigerian. I hope you were able to successfully identify the issue. The lion won't sleep tonight. Cause we woke now. And we woke now. I said the lion won't sleep tonight. Cause we woke now. And we woke now. They want us to sell our souls to barter profit like God's property is hard to market so we steady to aim keep your eyes on target cause when you got to drive yeah they'd rather you park it but I don't valet you ain't getting these keys I'm keeping close hands I'm on bending knee I'm just a reflection dealing with eight sections art mixed with life you can feel the convection you lying won't sleep The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. The white man is enacting a story all over the world. Mm -hmm. we, we left our homes and flooded the world. We smothered culture. We smothered knowledge. We erased history and rewrote it our way. Myself, I 100, or my grandfather is 100% Ashkenazi Jewish, claiming to be Jewish. Ashkenazi Jewish is just a conspiracy. White men claiming to be of tribes of Israel when I'm Germanic, you know, I, yeah. I have no ties to Israel, no ties to Judaism, you know, except, except loosely written history that's been whitewashed over for centuries, and, you know. It's, From the Renaissance. Oh yeah, right? Yeah, you just, yeah. you, you wipe everything yeah. clean. It's funny how, yeah, exactly, the Renaissance, it's this rebirth, but it's, it's white rebirth. I think at the same exact time the Renaissance is happening, Columbus is sailing to America and committing Ooh. genocide. There's only one true ethnic Jew, the Mizrahi Jew, because they are Africans, and if you read the original Bible written in Phoenician Hebrew, they're not. Jewish people are not Europeans. The modern Jews in Israel are Russians from, or Khazars to be precise, from Russia. I learned it from my grandfather that he was, a, cause he was an Ashkenazi Jew. The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color, have told us what it means to be black. You know, you know what you are? You are an ancient Israelite. Ancient Israelite, that's who we are. That's who we are. If you give me time, yeah. if you give me time, already said, uh, no, I know, we don't have so many years. I know, I know. Look, look at this. This is pages and pages of yes. notes, and I promise we'll give yes. more teaching. But here is my challenge to you. All right, I'm hearing some of your traditions. It's like the days of the Bible. Yes. Do you want to remain ancient Israelites, or you want to be Jews? Do you want to remain ancient Israelites? Or you want to be Jews? Do you want to remain? Assalamu alaikum. In the 13th tribe 
Arthur Kosler traces the origin of Eastern Europe's Jewish population that was largely decimated by the Nazi onslaught during the Second World War. Through extensive research, he discusses the history of a trading empire that was set up by a tribe known as the Khazars. The Khazar Empire was located between the expanding power blocks of Christianity and Islam, and the people were converted to Judaism by their king as a way of standing apart from both. The Khazarians and their wealth were dispersed through the countries of Eastern Europe after the collapse of the Khazar Empire. The Khazarians were not a Semitic people, that they called themselves Jews after their conversion to Judaism is as absurd as the Chinese Muslims calling themselves Arabs. Is as absurd as the Chinese Muslims calling themselves Arabs. Is as absurd as the Chinese Muslims calling themselves Arabs. The Khazarians were not a Semitic people that they called themselves Jews after their conversion to Judaism is as absurd as the Chinese Muslims calling themselves Arabs. It is their descendants who later started the campaign for European Jews to return to Palestine, a land their ancestors never set foot on. The European Jews, i.e. descendants of Khazarians, were not descendants of Prophet Abraham. Therefore, bringing into question the legality of their claim on the promised land. This book had been out of print for many years and has only recently been republished. The true Jews of Israel are your black ancestors. Are your black ancestors? Are your black ancestors? The true Jews of Israel are your black ancestors. <laughs> uh? You think you and Cow make TikToks together? Cow only cares about money. <laughs> mm? Think about it. Are you really making TikToks together? Or is Kyle profiting off of you? It's just like the last tribes of Israel. It's just like the last tribes of Israel. I was noticing that you're kind of hanging out a lot with Kyle lately. Is there a problem with that? No, I think it's amazing. It's awesome that someone like you could be okay with someone like him, given all the new information lately. You know, the stuff that's come out about how the Jews stole the black race's identity? That the lost tribes of Judah were actually all Africans? You didn't hear about this? Black people are actually the Jews and people like Kyle have taken that from them? Stop talking to me. When the Jews came to America to escape persecution in World War II, they found that blacks were already the underclass in America. So they had to invent a story for themselves which they could make everyone believe because Kyle run Hollywood! I, I'm, I'm so glad you're here because you can bring great clarity. Can you tell us a little bit about the Sephardic Jews and how they were scattered? Because um, they went west. I sure can. Because the reason why I want to is because a lot of them, and a lot of people don't know this, are in the Caribbean. They are. In the islands. And I know you're that. one of them. I know, I'm that. One of them. <laughs> I know that. I know that. Because, because you know, a lot of folk don't know that the, those roots are there. One of the first um, batches of slaves that came to Jamaica, they were the Sephardic Jews. It's documented. And they're all over the, Caribbean, all over the Caribbean, South America, Central America, yeah. and even the central, South Central United States states wow. and DNA testing is a factor in all this now Genesis chapter 11 verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem Shem was a black man in Africa if you repeat this fact they can't laugh at you if you repeat this fact they can't laugh at you want to say peace and blessings to everyone want to say peace and blessings to everyone my apologies for being late uh had some last minute stuff that i was adding into this presentation and taking away because i really want to cover a little bit of a video that i uh, came across earlier today and so i kind of shifted we're going to have to just extend this into a part three because of what I wanted to uh, discuss uh, in this 
video. So uh, my apologies for being late. Uh, like I said, um, came across some additional information that I wanted to uh, really cover, a video that I want to cover, but further uh, prove uh, the point uh, that I shared uh, last week, anything and anyone but the Negroes, but the point that I've been making for years with that that uh, that actual uh, saying, anything but the Negroes, that uh, the Christian church, they would rather serve a Martian Christ than, than a Negro Messiah. And then we could say, likewise, when we start dealing with uh, Judaism and also non, uh, or should we say, messianic uh jews if you want to call it that uh i think that's the term that many of them go by uh when you use those terms uh but you'll see the same rules apply that they would rather uh worship a messiah that looks like anyone else but us uh anyone else can be israel but our community you know even though uh historical proof uh, as far as information that we have that proves that the ancient Israelites were not uh, Caucasians well, whatsoever. But uh, unfortunately, again, uh, some of these things get swept under the rug. You know, some of these things get tossed aside. But anything but the Negroes, they would rather worship, uh, let's just say, a Messiah that are that is from a Turkish origin than to worship a messiah of a negro <laughs> origin you know so again this is uh nothing new of uh, the stuff that we see here the stuff that we've witnessed but these are some of the things that i wanted to uh really touch on but the thing that i really wanted to tell um, that really caught my attention is i was looking at a video earlier by a a professor by the name of mike brown he's he's um of course from the Jewish community uh, as we know them. And he uh, had a debate uh, about a few months back, you know, uh, in, uh, with uh, Guerrilla Hebrew. But I came across this video earlier uh, in regards to uh, the Israelites. And um, he had some very, for me, unfortunate words uh, as far as his approach in terms of uh, about Dante forced in about his book uh actually i think he shared some he's been talking about his book for the past couple of weeks uh just from what i observed from that video and i'm going to kind of use some of his stuff as well tonight to show you that uh if we've if, if we presented information the way that he presents information and others pre uh, present information man we'll have all kinds of hate videos. I mean, we've gotten hate videos done about us and we we, we are given nothing but the truth, right? But you have many and literally make up stuff on the fly and uh, don't have to be subjected to any ridicule, any rid ridicule. So I'm going to let you hear some of his contradictions and um, I want to let you hear as well. Uh, we, we're going to still touch on some of the things from the previous rabbi from last week, but let me just do something real quick. Let me uh, take this invite and let me copy this invite. You know what? And I, I'll drop this in the, the comment section as well. Uh, we'll, we'll, you know, but let me drop this invite real quick because uh, I know I told my cousin I was going to, going to do a live and uh, let me send him the, the invite real quick. Let me see here. And what I may do, I may just for the uh, sake of time, I may even, let me see here, show another clip, uh, just show a clip of just what I was getting at and some of the contradictions. And we, we will systematically discuss and pick apart, uh, let me see here, his arguments. Uh, let me see here. Just tagging my cousin real quick. All right. So let me share uh, one of the videos that he's done. And we'll kind of show some of the other stuff as well. 
uh, we'll kind of go back and forth. But I want to start off by setting the tone with showing a clip. All right. A couple of clips from Mike Brown's uh, video. All right. Matter of fact, again, let me go back here. Let's show a couple of clips from it. And um, family, uh, share the video. If you not, if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. But I want to play a couple of clips, and then I'll play uh, some contradictions in the, in the middle of uh, in in between. So let's start off with how he set the tone. All right. So here we go. So this is totally different group of people now, right? This this nation, this people called Ashkenaz, nothing to do with Israel, nothing to do with Jewish people. Well, who? Who are they? If you will look at virtually every major Bible dictionary, Bible encyclopedia, here's what you'll find. I'm going to read to you, for example, from the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary, one of the most respected Bible dictionaries, multi-volume. Who is Ashkenaz? Here's what you see. The first descendant of Gomer, who is the first offspring of Yafet in the Table of Nations. In Jeremiah 51, 27, Ashkenaz appears along with Ararat and Nini, as a kingdom called upon to oppose Babylon. The name is identified with the Neo-Assyrian Ishkuza, who appeared between the Black and Caspian Sea in the 8th and 7th centuries BC, driving out the Cimmerians. And it goes on, uh, who are they then? Uh, for Herodotus, so a famous historian in time before Jesus, these people came to be called the Scythians or Scythians, right? We could read through the rest of that in detail. But this has nothing to do with Israel. This has nothing to do with the Jewish people. This has nothing to do with Ashkenazi Jews today. It was an ancient people called the Scythians or Scythians. And they leave society. They disappear. They're all gone a couple thousand years ago. Oh, here's, here's another Bible dictionary. Uh, Erdman's Bible Dictionary, Ashkenaz, the eldest of the three sons of Gomer, the son of Japheth, and the name of a kingdom, referencing these same verses. Most likely it was the Scythian kingdom, and then also referencing Assyrian, so Akkadian, uh, Ishkuza. The connection to the Cimmerian invasions accounts for its relation to Gomer. Align themselves with the Mani, the Scythians revolted against Assyria in the 7th century BC, but were afterwards conquered by the Medes and the Persians in 538. They provided contingents of troops for the Persian attack against Babylon. And then after a few hundred years, they're lost from history. So they have zero to do with Israel, zero to do with Jewish people, zero to do with Ashkenazi Jews today. Zero. You say, well, where then did where did the name Ashkenazi came from? Come. All right. So family that's one of the contradictions we're going to cover here and um uh, before we get into it got my cousin here let me bring him on I want to say peace and blessings to my cousin benaya uh peace and blessings to you guys um anything you want to say to the people before we get into it i'm not sure if you heard the clips that i just played yeah i just got caught the the, the tail end of the last one so yeah peace and blessings at family um hope, hopefully everyone's doing well yeah, it should be a, a very interesting discussion. <laughs> very interesting. Man, I, I tell you, because and, and like I was sharing with the people that what we're witnessing from uh, this particular group of people is they're literally telling us to our face that they can change history. Mm. They can literally change history. And um, just so you can get caught up, I will play. Uh, his two clips again so you can hear and we're gonna I, I want to uh, you know right off the back address one of his uh, contradictions that's so easy to uh, ad address so uh, I'm going to play two of his clips and then we'll, we'll uh, come back into it all right just so that way you can get caught up okay So this is totally different group of people now, right? This this nation, this people called Ashkenaz, nothing to do with Israel, nothing to do with Jewish people. Well, who who are they? 
If you will look at virtually every major Bible dictionary, Bible encyclopedia, here's what you'll find. I'm going to read to you, for example, from the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary, one of the most respected Bible dictionaries, multi-volume. Who is Ashkenaz? Here's what you see. The first descendant of Gomer, who is the first offspring of Japhet in the table of nations. In Jeremiah 51, 27, Ashkenaz appears along with Ararat and Nini as a kingdom called upon to oppose Babylon. The name is identified with the Nero-Assyrian Ishkuza, who appeared between the Black and Caspian Sea in the 8th and 7th centuries BC, driving out the Cimmerians. And it goes on. Uh, who are they then? Uh, for Herodotus, so a famous historian in time before Jesus, these people came to be called the Scythians or Scythians, right? We could read through the rest of that in detail, but this has nothing to do with Israel. This has nothing to do with the Jewish people. This has nothing to do with Ashkenazi Jews today. It was an ancient people called the Scythians or Scythians, and they leave society, they disappear. They're all gone a couple thousand years ago. Oh, here's, here's another Bible dictionary, uh, Erdman's Bible dictionary, Ashkenaz, the eldest of the three sons of Gomer, the son of Japhet, and the name of a kingdom, referencing these same verses. Most likely it was the Scythian kingdom, and then also referencing Assyrian, so Akkadian, uh, Ishkuza. The connection to the Cimmerian invasions accounts for its relation to Gomer, aligned themselves with the Manai, the Scythians, revolted against Assyria in the 7th century BC, but were afterwards conquered by the Medes and the Persians. In 538, they provided contingents of troops for the Persian attack against Babylon. And then after a few hundred years, they're lost from history. So they have zero to do with Israel, zero to do with the Jewish people, zero to do with Ashkenazi Jews today. Zero. You say, well, where then did where did the name Ashkenazi came from? Come. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so what's your thoughts? Cause I know you, I know you, uh, you know, like the, the, the old saying, I know you percolate no there, man, you know, just, just with the, just hearing those first uh, couple of video clips of what he said about the Ashkenazi Jews. And I know that you just did a, a great video, uh, actually a, a, a series that you've, that you're still working on, but you put a couple of videos out there that's really yeah. laying the foundation on who the K um, the the Ashkenazi, who the Khazars, and linking and connecting the dots. Yeah, the the fact that they're trying to run away from Ashkenaz is funny, and I think we you know, we kind of talked about it before, maybe offline. But it's like we're getting to the point where DNA is going to make is going to make these um, escape routes. Uh, you know, it's going to shut them down <laughs> pretty much. Uh, because, um, it, you know, I, I am working on a, another video of Most High Willing. Um, you know, I, I'll uh, release it. I might release it tomorrow night. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But what you'll find is that DNA at, at this point, it's it's it does a couple of things. One is it shows who they are. You know, I say, who, you know, they I mean, the you know, the Ashkenazi Jews beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, and it shows who they're not. <laughs> it shows those two things. So most I will, because, um, you know, we'll, we'll bring that out. And also, I'm not, I don't want to spoil your, uh, you know, any any clips that you have uh, saved up or, or teed up. But, you know, uh, Professor Elhike, you know, nipped this in the bud as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And see, I was trying to get the clips together even for that. Yeah. And um, some weird things were what was happening. It's like I downloaded uh, a couple of the clips from it, and it would only show the I mean, play the audio, but not the video. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I okay. didn't get a chance to, uh, okay, you know, uh, extract the video like I wanted to. But what I do plan on doing doing is another discussion on this and kind of uh, bringing the two together. But yeah, he 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 dropped the. The bomb on that, uh, you know, really confirming yeah. what we've already taught anyway. So did you want to share yeah. with the people some of the things that he pointed out? Yeah, I mean, he, he made it simple. Right? And, and that's why that's what I love about his his research. I mean, it's really simple. I mean, he, he talks about, you know, genetic distance, 
and basically is comp is comparing one group to another group. And if they're, you know, the closer they are, uh, as far as, um, you know, the relationship between the two groups, the more, you know, the more similar they are, the, the lower the genetic distance value is. So like a mother and a daughter or a father and a daughter or a father and a son, like their genetic distance value is going to be super small. It's going to be close to zero. Right. Uh, but someone that's maybe like a fourth or fifth uh, generation cousin, their genetic distance value is going to be larger. So basically the, 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 the smaller the value, the more closer you are. So what Dr. Ilhike did, he basically just went around and started comparing the Ashkenazi Jew DNA to different groups. And one of the groups that he compared them to was the Georgian group. So if you're not familiar with where um, like Georgia, Russia is, if you look at if you're looking at a map, you have the, the Black Sea and, and then you have the, and then you have the Caspian Sea It's basically kind of north north of Israel. Um, and that's where the Caucasus Mountains is like right below the Caucasus Mountains is the area of Georgia, Russia. And that's the area that he compared the Ashkenazi Jews DNA to. Which, by the way, according to the Table of Nations, that's ancient Ashkenaz. Like, if you look at the Table of Nations, you get like a a, um, a, a Bible a atlas, um, you know, that that shows like where things are. The uh, Georgia Russia is actually ancient Ashkenaz, and that's the area that uh, Doctor Elhaik compared the Ashkenazi Jews to. And guess what? They were very close closely related to the georgia russians so like i said beyond a shadow of a doubt dr l height you know pretty much shut this thing down and and i do want to touch on something that you just highlighted and also uh what uh uh what's his name uh mike brown professor mike brown touched on as well is he mentioned uh, gave information about the scythians and family i'm going to show you uh just how if you know if we double talk like how many of these guys double talk uh we probably have a ton of videos made about us about bending twisting i mean we already have videos done about us for telling the truth but can you imagine if we were purposely bending and twisting uh history like the way that many of these guys are so you heard him say that the scythians right uh and he gave a separation between the Ashkenazis of the ancient times, which he pointed to the Scythians versus today. So I want you to hold on to that thought. And I'm going to share with you a source here real quick, a simple quote source. I just went to the Britannica and just, uh, you know, looked up the Scythians. So I want to, want to highlight something real quick. And, and again, you know, one thing um, I, I learned a long time ago. If you ever want someone to tell the truth of, about who they are, uh, you know, if you want to know everything you need to know about a person, just let them talk. Just listen. Right. You know, they'll spill the beans. Even if they're telling you a lie, they'll tell you that they are lying to you. But you just have to know how to listen to it. So he mentioned the Scythians. He made it clear that the Scythians are nowhere to be found. I'm going to play that clip one more time. All right. Just so you guys can hear it. Fair use. Here we go. Uh, here's here's another Bible dictionary, uh, Erdman's Bible dictionary, Ashkenaz, the eldest of the three sons of Gomer, the son of Japheth, and the name of a kingdom, referencing these same verses. Most likely it was the Scythian kingdom, and then also referencing Assyrian, so Akkadian, uh, Ishkuza. The connection to the Cimmerian invasions accounts for its relation to Gomer, aligned themselves with the Mani, the Scythians revolted against the Syria in the 7th century BC, but were afterwards conquered by the Medes and the Persians in 538. They provided contingents of troops for the Persian attack against Babylon. And then after a few hundred years, they're lost from history. So they have zero to do with Israel, zero to do with the Jewish people, zero to do with Ashkenazi Jews today. Zero. You say, where then did where the name Ashkenazi came from? Come all right, so <laughs> this is going, <laughs> man, I, you know how sometimes, man, you know, you, you just have, whether it's a brother or a cousin or a sibling, that you're just looking at them like, look, they're they just telling you, like, let's wrestle. And you're just looking at them like, look, you know, 
you know I'm going to ball you up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that, that's kind of how I listen to this right here. It's like when he said that about the Scythians, all right? And I'm going to show the people how he literally double talked here. You know, and this is unfortunate, you know, very unfortunate that the day and time that we live in that we can't even trust the people that are saying that they are, uh, uh, how, how can we say, uh, skilled or uh, have the academia for a particular area. But we already know that that doesn't matter because it was people with um, higher achievements within the academia, uh, academic world that determined that we were three fifths human, you know, that we were less than. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. Let me show you this, guys. You're going to probably laugh, right? So, family, let me stretch this out here. Who are the Scythians? Let's see who the Scythians are. Let's see who they are, right? This is coming from Britannica.com on the Scythians. So, I'm not making this up. You can see it. As you see here, Scythians, right? Scyth, Saka, or uh, Sake. It says here, member of a nomadic people originally of Iranian stock. Known from as early as the 9th century BCE who migrated westward from Central Asia to Southern Russia and Ukraine in the 8th, uh, the 8th and 7th centuries uh, BCE. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And then it says uh, a little, uh, I didn't put it all here, it says powerful empire centered on what is now Crimea. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Your thoughts, cuz? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's that um, it's that region that had, that, you know, had multiple names. So it was called uh, before it was called, uh, you know, the Cynthia or Scythians. Uh, they were the young, they were known as the Yamnaya. So it was like the Yamnaya, the Scythians. And then uh, it was also called the um, the Khazars. And the common thread throughout throughout time, you know, for that area was that when they described the people, they described them as light skin, blue eyes, red hair, light skin, blue eyes, red hair. And you even, you even have Josephus talk about the people over there, basically in uh, jo- Josephus in his book. I think it was like um, uh, the Table of Nations. Josephus, he goes on to say something to the effect of, he says, like the Greeks describe the Scythians or they refer to the, you know, to they consider the Scythians, um, you know, you know, Magog or something like that. You know, basically the, the people that's going to play a part in the end of the world. But those people in that area, they were known for being barbaric. They were known for being backwards. They were known for being violent and, and warlike. Um, I don't know if you guys ever, ever watched like Lord of the Rings. And like the um, uh, like the orcs, you know, these are like the if you guys don't know, I'm just kind of <laughs> describe. Oh, yeah, quick. yeah, I'm, I'm a geek. You know me. So you got some <laughs> geeks over, up in here. Right. It's like over over where the where the evil guys live. Right. You know, it's, it's basically barren. It's basically like a wasteland. And so the 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 M.O. of like the Khazars and these guys, it's like whenever they would go into war, they would they would go into this scorched scorched earth tactic. Like they would burn everything cattle uh crop houses so that when they left you always knew where they were because they scorched everything it, it looked like it looked like mars basically so like i said these people were backwards they were they were warlike uh they they have a a look to them and and it's and ironically it is the same look that is that is the look of the ashkenazi jews as far as like the you know the red hair red hair blue eyes i literally have references that that describe the you know the the typical look of the ashkenazi jews absolutely and, I, and i'm going to show a clip that i'm going to let mike brown's uh professor mike brown's own words literally tell you and confirm that we already know who the ashkenazis is but i'm going to let you hear it uh first i want to give a shout out to eric tinsley family let's give him some love for uh the contributions tonight I uh, say Israel for Israel. Absolutely. And family, yeah. let's show Eric some some love here for uh, the contribution tonight. Hallelujah. So let's 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 show him some love. And again, I want to say uh, Shabbat 
shalom to to you guys tonight to to some and shabbat shalom to others so just want to say peace and blessings again to you guys tonight so appreciate it really appreciate it uh eric tinsley for the contribution tonight so let's go ahead and let uh professor mike brown let 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 let's hear his contradiction and you're going to hear him tell you that he's connected to these people listen listen closely family here we go so a little over a thousand years ago as Jewish people scattered around the world had now emigrated in Europe and now were living in, in the Rhineland in Germany. They looked at the name Gomer in Genesis 10 and they connected Gomer with Germany. So they took on the identity of the name Ashkenaz. It has nothing to do with Ashkenaz in the Bible, which is a descendant of Yafet. It's just a name that was taken. Okay, it's that simple. Just like my last name, Brown, doesn't refer to the color of my skin or anything else. It was shortened from a, from a Russian name when, when my grandfather came over uh, at Ellis Island. The name got shortened to Brown. It's just a name. That's all it is. So the idea that Ashkenazi Jews are descended from Yafet is a myth, 100% false. <laughs> Did he say short for a Russian name? <laughs> Did, did you did you catch that, um, Benaya? Hmm. Did did you guys catch that contradiction there? I'll play it one more time. That's why yeah. I say it, you just let the people talk. Listen to what he says. He says, Brown. He lets you know, Russia, Russian name, and as his father used coming over from overseas. I mean, literally, he just tell, told us that his origins is the Russian area of his, his great grandfather. I'm going to play a one more time family. <laughs> That's why I say is, is you, you just let a person talk long enough. I, I wish I had some additional clips here, but, but here it is. Cause I'll play it again for you. So a little over a thousand years ago, as Jewish people scattered around the world had now emigrated in Europe and now were living in, in the Rhineland in Germany, they looked at the name Gomer in Genesis 10, and they connected Gomer with Germany. So they took on the identity of the name Ashkenaz. It has nothing to do with Ashkenaz in the Bible, which is a descendant of Yafet. It's just a name that was taken. Okay, it's that simple. Just like my last name Brown doesn't refer to the color of my skin or anything else. It was shortened from a, from a Russian name when, when my grandfather came over uh, at Ellis Island. The name got shortened. to It's just a name. That's all it is. So the idea that Ashkenazi Jews are descended from Yafet is a myth, 100% false. <laughs> because he literally <laughs> says that the, Ashken the term Ashkenaz doesn't have nothing to do with them. But yet he says his people uh, associated the name with Germany and then they took on the name. He literally says that his people took the term Ashkenazi and connected to Germany and then put them, put their, you know, basically embraced it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Who's on first? What's on second, third base? <laughs> right. What's your thoughts? Yeah, we kind of talked about it offline. It's like, um, you know, for for people that, that aren't familiar with the history of, you know, of, of the um, the expulsion of the Khazars and, you know, and how they were, you know, they were basically they, they were basically kicked out of their land. Like like right now, you, you see all the stuff happening with Ukraine. You know, and Zelensky and and everyone's wondering, like, man, why why does it seem, seem like those guys are that area is like the center of the of the universe right now, as far as like you know World War Three kicking off? Well, that's suppo the supposed homeland of the Indo Europeans, which is the you know the the forefathers of the, of the of the Europeans, and the the history is is that the you know of course that was the territory there was also the territory of the Khazars, and the Ta Khazars got displaced by the russians so the russians come in they kick out the the uh, khazars the khazars flee to the east 
I'm sorry, they flee to the to the west. And this was like in the ninth, you know, the, the ninth century, right? Ninth century, they get kicked off. They, they get kicked out. They, they're going over towards uh, Germany. So then, oddly enough, in the ninth century is when the Ashken, Ashkenazi um, Ashkenazi come into existence in Germany. <laughs> right at the ninth century, right after the Khazars got kicked out, Ashkenazi just pop up, right? And this is why this commentary by doc, by um dr brown is, is is laughable because he's hoping that you're not familiar with the history that, that's over in that area yeah i mean it's it was when i listened to his video i was i just said to myself unbelievable unbelievable it's like yeah. wow and uh he literally i mean he went in on dante early on going through his book, uh, literally uh, basically discrediting his book and then followed that with these comments here that we're uh, highlighting here. I, I, of course, I, we can't go through the whole video. We'll be here through the, you know, the, the full Shabbat if we try to go through the entire video. But just the first few minutes of that video, once we got past Dante, uh, is where I mean, these clips are, you know, I took these clips from and I mean, you can see that. I mean, it's like uh, you hear a lot of double talking, yeah. a lot of double talking literally says that Ashkenaz has nothing to do uh, with them and with the people of the of the Bible. But yet we can pull up sources and I and I, and I share sources from last uh, when I did this last week. And I showed this source. Let me see. Let me pull it up here. You know, this is a, this is a source that I've been using and pulling on for almost 10 years. Right. But when I go to this particular source, let me see here. You know, I have a lot of <laughs> stuff on my screen. Yeah. Let me see here. It's, it's a source that. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, I may have missed it. Is that but it's just origin? amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think I passed it. Let's see here. I think it was the LA Times. Uh, let's see. Yeah, hitters, right? If we went to, for example, the LA Times, it says here, uh, family, it says, so says a new study in the journal. Uh, Nature Communication, an international team of scientists, sequenced the complete genomes of 128 healthy Ashkenazi Jews and compared each of those sequences with the others, as well as with the DNA of 26 Flemish people from Belgium. The, it says here, their analysis allowed them to trace the genetic roots of their population to a founding group in the Middle Ages. Now, I want to show a couple of other clips that we'll get into in this uh, kind of, uh, and, and you can touch on again, uh, Benea, about the genetic distances, because I know I talk about it all the time as well. And we brought up about how uh, Professor Elhike right. uh, discussed this here. But we see here, they are making it clear, tracing them all the way back to a group of people in the Middle Ages. And it says here, Ashkenaz in Hebrew, refers to Germany and Ashkenazi Jews are those who originated in Eastern Europe. Your, your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so, yeah. I think um, with, and this is the one where like uh, DNA is, 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 is going to trip them up because they were able to uh, basically, if you, you know, they were able to extract DNA from, from, you know, from ancient, um, from the ancient remains of skeletons and basically they, they used the tooth they tried to they extract the dna from from the teeth tooth to teeth and and the, the people that they extracted it from you know they were around during like you know the 1200s or the thir the 13th 1300s and once they once they pulled out their their dna they performed a you know dna analysis to see what these people were made of and these people were Ashkenazi Jews, you know, Ashkenazi from, the, you know, the time of the 1200s and the 1300s. And one thing that they discovered was these people were, they had 
three primary compositions to their to their DNA. So basically, they were kind of made up of three people. One was Russia, <laughs> and the other was a, a Italian, and then the third was was uh, they had like a, a Levant uh, hit in there. But you know, if if you look at the chart that they have like this chart that represents like how much each component represents. Russia makes up a nice chunk. Italy makes up probably the, 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 the greater of the, of the, of the two um, portions, you know, that most of these people or three portions that, that most of these people had. So that's why I say that. And, and so basically just, just at a high level per DNA, the ancient Ashkenazi who were the forefathers, the predecessors of, you know, the uh, current Ashkenazi um, uh, population, they literally had Russian, you know, a R Russia, a Russian in their DNA profile. So this whole thing about them not being related <laughs> to, you know, the Khazars and all this stuff that goes out the window with DNA. And that's why I say like DNA is, is, is throwing all this stuff out the door. And, and to your point, and you just uh, so eloquently uh, set me up for this uh, this video right here. <laughs> you just you just set it up, you perfectly. So with that being said, family, here's another clip I want to share with you. But uh, it was now time to briefly explain why Ashkenazi Jews are in fact legitimately Jews, part of the larger people of Israel, right? Along with Black Jews, along with Sephardic Jews, along with Mizrahi Jews, Middle Eastern Jews, and. Yeah, all part of the same people. When people say, well, well, Brown, when did this ever happen to Ashkenazi Jews? This part of the, the people of Israel. My, my history goes back to Egypt. If you're a black Jew legitimately in Israel, your history goes back to, to Egypt when, when we were in exile. Our history goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? And, and then, as we're scattered around the world, as, as we'll see in a moment, intermarriage and other things, skin colors change, complexity change, other things change. We'll explain that, and DNA confirms all that. So, so here's, what I, here's what I wrote. First proof, DNA confirms the authenticity of Ashkenazi Jews. As for the most comprehensive, recent DNA study of Ashkenazi Jews, spearheaded by geneticists from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and Harvard Medical School, and published November 30th, 2022, it confirms that we can trace our lineage back to first century Jewish communities in Italy, which would include those sold as slaves into Rome, as well as earlier Jewish communities there, which Acts mentions. So I can trace my lineage back to the first century and from there back to ancient Israel. Oh, my goodness. You know, I'm I'm kind of in that Shrek mode right now. I'm kind of in that mode. You see how he set it up, right? This <laughs> is what you were pointing out, and this is being that he mentioned it, and he should know that uh, when you quote sources, what uh, we're going to do. Or anyone that that that's you know uh, you know into uh, historical information, or just from an academic perspective, you already know from an academic perspective, you know uh, we're going to read those sources, and rightfully rightfully so, those that followed or was watching this should have followed these sources as well. But unfortunately, looking at the comment section, I can see that no one pulled up the sources. Would you believe, cuz, <laughs> everything he said does not line up with this article. It does not line them up with first century, as he said, uh, Italians who were enslaved and all that other stuff. It doesn't. So I'm going to drop the link inside the comment section for you guys to read just to make sure that I didn't miss anything, uh, you know, because if I... If I did miss it, hey, you know, uh, charge it to my head, not to my heart. And I will apologize on uh, a live, you know, directly to him if I made if I am in error. But I read this article and I'm going to drop it in the comment section for you guys to read as well. And you're not going to see what he just pointed out.
So let's highlight a couple of things. And to your point, because this uh, article also talks about the what you mentioned about the um, the tooth and, the, yeah. you know, some of the things that you pointed out. I didn't put it all in here, but it's inside this article. But notice what it says here. It says about half of Jewish people around the world identify as Ashkenazi, meaning that they descended or excuse me, that they descend from Jews who lived in Central or Eastern Europe. The term was initially used to define a, cult, a, a distinct cultural group of Jews who settled in the 10th century in the Rhineland uh, in Western Germany. But make a note of that 10th century, because in this article, there's nothing that dates beyond the 10th century. Some would even go as far as saying the ninth century. But in this publication, it says nothing about the first century. And we're going we're going to also go to that that chart that I'm going to share with you in the clip as well. But it goes on to say, despite much speculation, many gaps exist in our understanding of the origin of Ashkenazi Jews and the demographic upheavals they experienced during the second millennium. To answer some of these pressing questions, the 30-person team led by Shay Carmi at the Hebrew University and David Reich at HMS, so I am using their sources, the source that he mentioned, analyzed DNA from the remaining the re remains of 33 individuals buried in medieval Jewish cemetery in Erfurt, Germany. Now, this is what you just mentioned earlier, uh, uh, Benaya, about, I think this is what you was referring to. Yep. A any thoughts or comments before I go um, continue reading on? Yeah, you, you'll probably uh, get to it here, but the the thing is, is that, you know, when they had those ancient, um, you know, uh, remains that they looked at and the first thing that they did, of course, you know, they analyzed the remains. Right, family. But then what they found was that when they took a look at the at the remains, they found that they were actually looking at two distinct groups. Because I saw in the That's chat, right. I saw in the chat where somebody was like, are, they're Italy, they're Italian. You know, what are we looking at? Well, according to DNA, when they looked at it, they said, hmm. These people, you know, we have one people that they looked as though, you know, you know, they have Italian and they have they have ties back to um, the Levant, right? Then they had this this other group that had ties over to Russia, right? Over to the the territory of the Khazars. It's funny because in that paper they try their hardest not to say Khazars, and if I if I, if I remember correctly, they don't say it not one time. But they'll say Russia in there all day long. So it's like group one, Russia, you know, the other group is Levant. And then when you think about it, it's like, well, what groups are we looking at? What people are we looking at? Remember Esau, right? And then we talked about Ashkenaz and, you know, as far as like Jafat. So in my, you know, in my mind, you're, you're actually looking at two different groups. But the what they'll tell you is that the, the present day Ashkenaz are a, um, a byproduct of those two groups. And to your point here, and this is what it's going to pull out. It says, Erfurt's medieval Jewish community existed between the 11th and 15th centuries with a short gap following a massacre in 1349. At times, it thrived and was one of the largest Jewish communities in Germany. Following the expulsion of all Jews in 1454, the city built a granary on top of the Jewish cemetery. And then when we skip down in this article, because I didn't put it all in here, but notice what it says here, just to your point, it says, the analysis revealed two distinct subgroups within the remains of, uh, it says within the remains, one with greater Middle Eastern ancestry, which may represent Jews with origins in Western Germany, and another with greater Eastern and Central European ancestry. The modern Ashkenazi population formed as a mix of these groups and absorbed little to no outside genetic influences over the 600 years that followed, the author said. And then it goes on to talk about the diseases, like it says here, some disease 
causing uh, mutations that are widespread in modern Ashkenazi Jew Jews who uh, it says are suspected to have been introduced by members of the founding group long ago. The team found some of these mutations in Erfurt as well, indicating that the medieval Ashkenazi population indeed originated from ex an extremely small set of founders. But I don't see them taking it back to the first century. As right. he highlighted. Yep. And it's funny because um, not only did, you know, Dr. Brown go this route, uh, the other gentleman, um, was it uh, Abraham? Was it Abram? Um, what's that guy's name? Let me look him up here. Uh, Henry Abram, Abramson. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's the other one that, that pushes that narrative. And, and basically, when they both referred, what you what you notice that is that when they both referred to this article, you notice the article uh, mentioned that there was two distinct groups that were the that were the like the the, the root groups. They never mentioned the group, the Russian group. <laughs> That's right. They only mentioned the other group, you know, the one that that kind of sort of has ties back to the Levant, like I was telling you, or over here, you might say Middle Middle Eastern ancestry. And and also keep in mind, there's there's multiple articles on this, like the Harvard University. And there's I mean, it's, it's, this was one of those things that when it came out, it was carried carried by multiple publications and different publications have have more or less you know information on it. But they all, you know, but for, but for the most part, they all say the same thing. It's just that they might be worded, worded a little bit differently. But I said all this, said all this, all that to say those two groups that, that are there, what uh, these people are doing is that they're leaving out the Russian group and they're just pointing out the Middle Eastern group. And, and see, what's interesting, even how you see it worded here, one with greater Middle Eastern ancestry, but notice what it says here, which may represent Jews with origins in Western Germany. But there's no DNA to support that. There's no DNA to support it. Nope. But the kicker is when we go into this, this other article here that he made reference to, right? And then we'll go to the sources that we, we highlighted as well. It says Ashkenazi Jews, and this is the, the cell uh, article that he made reference to studies. In the introduction, it says Ashkenazi Jews emerged as a distinctive ethno-religious cultural group in the Rhineland in the 10th century. Doesn't say anything before that. Since then, the Ashkenazi Jew population expanded substantially, both geographically, first to Europe, uh, Eastern Europe, but then it also goes in, and here's the kick of the results. Historical and archaeological context, community uh, engagement and sample collection the first Jewish community of Erfurt, uh, it says pre-1349, was the oldest. But then it goes on to say during the 1349 pogrom, most Jews in Erfurt and nearby communities were murdered or expelled. But the kicker here is when we go here, it says, uh, let me go down to it. The individuals we studied were buried in the southwestern part of the medieval cemetery of Erfurt. But we don't see anything that he highlighted. And to your point is is really uh, on the surface with what he's pointing out. Yep. Because even with that, going back to that that supposed Middle Eastern, <laughs> right? When we go back here, what it says, one with greater Middle Eastern ancestry, which may represent Jews with origins in Western Germany. That right there is. Uh, it's like what you know what I mean what exactly is being said here because <laughs> to, and, to your am point I missing on the, on, some no I was going to say to your point on the next slide it tells you that that group came to, came into being well it must be, must be on the next one we're talked about the 10th century where they came in on the 10th century oh yeah the 10th century and that's the key, <laughs> kicker yeah here it is yep so 10th century, they that's when they they uh, they actually came into existence. And like we and like we pointed out earlier, it's like, ironically, in the ninth century, the Khazar Jews had just got kicked out. 
So ninth century, they got kicked out of Khazaria. In the 10th century, we have the Ashkenazi um, community pop up in Germany. But they're not related. <laughs> it's what they all tell you. And, and it's funny because, like I said, with, within, like if you ever look at the data behind so, uh, some of these uh, research articles, the, the data will show you that the actual individuals were uh, had Russian DNA. Like the, I mean, their their forefathers had Russian DNA. So for them to say that they're not related to the Khazars, that Russian DNA uh, disagrees with what they're saying. Exactly. And I, and I want to put this article out here again. You know, I do this all the time because I know that there's going to be some people watching from his group. So I want to make sure that I put this article out here by the forward, which is a Jewish owned publication a, a company that's been around for over 150 years. And I want to want to make sure you guys make a note of this as well. I, I make reference to this. It says here, can 23 and me tell us if Jews are a race and if and is that a good thing? Learning your genetic makeup has never been easier than it is in 2017 for less than the cost of a doctor's visit. But it goes on to say here, uh, it says um, some people are trying to use this service to find out if or to what extent they're Jewish, a phenomenon that worries historians and scientists. Buyers of mail ordered gene testing kits do get solid information from them. They learn where their ancestors were living nine, nine generations ago. Some have been found living, but long lost family members. The danger expert says is that in relying on these kits to learn more about their genes, users are perpetuating the notion that Jews are a race, a concept they say has no scientific basis. So let me fast forward to, I don't want to read all of this about the race, but let me go back here, right? Because this is the one that I want, the part that I want to highlight. Let me fast forward here, right? This is the, the area I want to highlight. It says here, Ashkenazi Jews often find themselves in the peculiar situation of being 90% Ashkenazi Jewish and 99% European. Right? So their own sources, we didn't write this. This is making it clear that when we're dealing with the Ashkenazi Jews, they're making it clear that they are at most 1%. And that's not even connecting it to, uh, the, you know, Northeast Africa. But it's just saying they are they are ninety nine percent European. A any thoughts, cuz? Yeah, I mean, there's there's no get, getting around that. Like we, was, we were saying with the um, you know with with the DNA of their uh, for you know for the forefathers that were found in Germany, there's there's no getting around that. I mean, it's it's in their DNA, and it, and it's funny that they're running running away from it. Um, you know, by not mentioning that second group I was telling you about, you know, that they don't mention the Russian group. Neither do they mention because they're like I said, in some of these um, articles, they actually actually give you a breakdown of the individuals that make up the ancient DNA in, you know, in those uh, research articles. And in that breakdown, they say, I mean, you'll see it has Russian in it. <laughs> so like I said, DNA is messing is messing that that whole uh, lie up because. Yeah. And you know what? In that source that I use, it does have Russia. It has Ukraine. Uh, what is the other one? I, I, I may have to bring it probably, up. On probably the Italy. Here. Italy. Cause that's, that's the other thing that, um, um, that Abram, Abramson, Henry Abramson tries to bring up too. Cause the narrative that that's trying, that they try to spin is, is uh, in 70 AD, they fled, you know, um, was it, you know, Rome came and took them to Italy. And then from Italy, they, then they went up into Germany. So that's the path that they're yeah. that they're claiming. But that again, that Russian DNA <laughs> is throwing everything off. So and that's what you see, like in that in that article, because when it talks about the Middle Eastern, right, it says Jews, it says um, uh, it says we considered a model where it. Uh, Eastern 
Ashkenazi Jews is a mixture of the following sources. It says Southern European, and it has a parenthesis. Matter of fact, I'll show it on the screen. Because I think this is the point right here that you're making. And, and <laughs> that's why, that's why uh, you know, I like to default right back to uh, Aaron L. Hake and some of these sources here that tells you about some of the uh, the trickery when we start dealing with uh, these different narratives that are being built. Let me see here. All right, let's see here. Mm. Uh, let's see, I'll share the screen. Uh, let's see here. Is it this one? Uh, let me let me pull this out real quick. Stream yeah, yard so, sometimes actually. So so to your to your point, uh, Pastor Kelly is like um, you can actually um, and and hopefully you know most high will and I I'll you know do a follow up video video as well. But you know if you start stacking up the evidence, you know the evidence is pretty strong as far as you know. Um, that the uh, Kazarian um, links and, and it's funny because, you know, nowadays when, when people talk about it, they try to be very dismissive of it and they try to, to uh, pretend as though the the evidence isn't strong. But when you run down the list of the evidence and this is just off off of the top of top of my head. Right. So evidence number one is the stuff that we went over with Dr. Elhaik, er, er, Iran Elhaik, and that is the, the genetic distance value like that is a strong, strong piece of evidence that you really can't get around that yeah. you compare their DNA to the DNA of the Georgia Russians or the people over in Kazaria and their genetic distance value is super small or basically it shows you shows you that they are closer to those guys. And I think Dr. Uh, Iran also said to the Italians uh, closer to those guys than anybody else over in, in the Levant slash uh, Middle East. That's that that evidence alone should be enough like in a court of law to prove that that they're the daddy <laughs> you know what i mean like it you know if we if we just had that alone uh, that would that would prove it yeah i may even play that clip because i still have this yeah. clip up that i was going to pull down but i was going to share that article real quick to what you were pointing out and for some reason let me see if this this is the scythian one right here let me see if I can pull it over this way. Um, let's see here. Let's stop this one. And then I'll let the people hear what uh, clarity that Aaron Elhaik, uh, Elhaik gives. For some reason, that particular one is not coming up. Hmm. All right, let me try it this way. Let me pull this back in. I know how to do it. Let me pull this other one up. Let me see if I can drag it over to the same one. All right. Actually, I'll do it this way. I'll just copy this over. Yeah, that's what I'll do. All right, and we'll go down to where what well, just what you pointed out with the Russia thing. Right. And so what we see here, to your point, and this is just showing that quantitative uh, ancestry modeling. But at the top, I mean, at the top, we saw 10th century. But it says here uh, we used, uh, you know, I'm not in, I'm not familiar with all these terms. So I'll just 
go ahead and skip down to here, but it says we considered a model where uh, Eastern Ashkenazi Jew uh, is a mixture of the following sources, Southern European, in other words, South Italians and North Italians, Middle Eastern, and this is what they specify within the Middle Eastern, Druze, Egyptians, Budeans, Palestinians, Lebanese, Jordanians, Syrians, or Saudis, and Eastern Russians. No, no. So to your point, Pastor Kelly. So what's in the what's in the bracket is is what makes up that group. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, so um, so we're, when it says Middle Eastern, then you, then it it shows you like all those all those uh, countries make up that group. But then when it says Eastern European, it just say Russians. Russians. Did you know? See that family? Exactly right here. Eastern European Russians. That's the group they that they don't bring up <laughs> when they're they're doing these these videos. You know. So we see here, as you said to your point, right? Southern Europeans, the South Italians, and North Italians. Then when they say Middle Easterns, look at the selections that are here. But the key is Eastern European Russians. Yep. So that that Russian ancestry is there and, and it's it's there strong. And um so you got, you know, you have this article that that shows like their and this is the, the the powerful thing about this article uh cuz is that this is showing their the the forefathers right this is showing the 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 group that gave rise to the modern modern ashkenazis so this core group you know this core group has you know has that russian has a strong russian uh um uh, percentage you know in their in their dna exactly 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 and so going back over here to the point that you're making and we'll, we'll let, and I'll bring in, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, the professor L hike here and let the people hear, but family, this is what Benaya was, um, referring to when we dealt with genetic, uh, distances. Uh, this is right here and I'll read it real quick. And then we'll let our Aaron L hike to explain some of what we, you know, to explain some of the, uh, the tactics, some of the flaws of what many use to try to lump everyone in and say, Hey, we all come in different shades. And I'll, I'll now let you actually hear, uh, professor Brown literally says all of us, uh, far as, uh, can be connected, but the key is, uh, they retained the, I guess the white complexion uh, of of the nations that they mesh with, but matter of fact, let me let you hear his words because I don't want to butcher his words, and then I'll 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 bring on Aaron L. Hike as well. But this is what he says about that. Let me see here. As an Ashkenazi Jew, as a as a Jewish person with a mixture of European descent along the line, uh, here is here is the actual study uh, uh, as as posted on the Cell website again highly regarded academic study. Genome-wide data from medieval German Jews show that the Ashkenazi founder event predated the 14th century, and then it goes back and unpacks this further, tracing our lineage on, through, through the fathers back to the Middle East, back to ancient Israel. Uh, I continue. This is all what I presented briefly in the, in the debate with Gurley Hebrew. Subsequently, as Italians converted and married into Judaism, our European skin color became part of our heritage. Then, as these Jews made their way into other parts of Europe and settled there, the same process continued, explaining our Caucasian complexion. But the same process occurred with African Jews, or Hispanic Jews, or Asian Jews, all of whom reflect other people marrying into the people of Israel Hence, the many different colors and ethnicities of Jews worldwide, in contrast with the original brown-skinned Israelites. <laughs> whoa, whoa, boy! <laughs> and 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 this is this is where again, like if you if 
if you knew about the DNA part of it, you know what he's saying is it, it's it's not possible. Like, so when it, when he talks about the light skin, like from a from a genetic perspective, they know that the R one B uh, or the R and the R one A groups were the ones that carried light skin into you know into Europe, right? And when you look at that, um, when you look at the research paper that we were referring to earlier. And what you'll find is that the people that make up the, the the founder group, there are some R1Bs in there, which tells you that they didn't come to that area to get light skin. It tells you that they brought light skin into that area. And to your point, this is coming from Kazaria.com. And when we see here, R1B, common in Western Europe, is also found in this project, and then you see just what you, what what, what you pointed out. Yep. And those are the some of the DNA groups that make up the founder um, Ashkenazi groups. Which, by the way, give you a, a little teaser. Which, by the way, you'll find those same um, founder groups in so-called African African Americans today, post slavery. And so the other thing I want to highlight, and we'll play Aaron L. Haig. This is what we're going to, this is the book, uh, Origin of Ashkenazi Jewry. And this is dealing with genetic distances. This book explains it, but I'm going to um, let, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pull the clip, uh, the video from um, your channel, cause, and let the people hear okay. directly from his mouth versus me just reading the source. I might as well just, play it from here. So let me share this. And, and family, what uh, just to what uh, professors pointing out is trying to uh, the base in the nutshell of genetic distances to say that, hey, the reason why we have all this different uh, when when I say we they has these variations, different groups uh, ethnic groups is because of genetic distances, right? That's the long way around it. All right. But let me, let me drop that here. All right. So I'm queuing it up right now. All right. And that was a great discussion too. So I encourage you guys to really get the full details on it go and watch watch the video because i was trying my hardest to get those clips in so um trying to think of who i could blame for me not achieving that <laughs> so uh let's see here i'm trying to oh there we go all right let me bring it here all right let's see i'm gonna stop this here and we're going to share All right. Let's see if it plays. That's the only thing. I think I downloaded it too. But let me know if it plays. Uh, uh, can you still hear me, um, Benea? Yep, loud and clear. All right. Let me see if this. Uh, if you can hear this. Can you hear that? No, not yet. All right, so let me try it a different way. I think I downloaded it. All right, let me do it a different way. Because sometimes I, I should have opened it up in uh, Chrome. Let me do it this way. Stop this. And let's go to video oh and pastor kelly white why are you doing that just a quick quick oh go ahead go ahead looks like it's gonna play before i came into the truth of knowing that all right i'll pause it you're getting ready to say some something because no i was just going to re re reiterate uh just one quick thing and that that is the the origin of the of the founder group because uh, what Dr. Brown was saying was that 
you know, you know, he, he talked about how, you know, they came from Italy, you know, up up into Germany. But the thing is, is that in those studies, remember we talked about before those studies, the study outlined or pointed out that there was there was two groups that made up the founder group. Right. And that in one of those groups was the one that they didn't talk about, which is the Russian group. And in that study, they literally tell you that that Russia group came from the West. I mean, it came from the East. Yeah. It came from the East because what they're what these guys are saying is that uh, they came up from from the South, you know, from Israel up until it, Italy. And then the reason why they have all these ad, ad mixtures was, was because they end up mixing with people in there. But I guess the point I'm just trying to make is that the founder group in the study, they said one of those groups came from the came from the East. They didn't mix with people from the East. They came from the East. But that's it. Well, and that's what's interesting is that when you look at it, you don't, you know, they list everything but Israel there. Right. You know, uh, under the uh, Middle Eastern, it lists uh, Palestinians, or it, it, but it lists everything but Israel. And you would think, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, but you would think that would be part of the group that's there. Right. You know, for us, and, and you know, that makes up that Middle Eastern group. And I hope I'm making sense. Yep. You know, so, uh, but yeah, it, but, but, but to say that uh, you're part of that group, but then when we look at the DNA, it's like, how are they, just like Aaron Elhick is going to point out, how are they bringing it all together? I mean, what we see there is given all these different groups, you know, that are, that are not what uh, Israel. And to your point, the the DNA, um, the the why, I mean, the, the haplogroups, like you pointed out, the R. But anyway, I'll play um, Aaron L. Hake's, uh comments on here. You can tell me if I'm going to, if I need to rewind it. Without an answer, we need to understand why this why Jews are going to Turkey. The algorithm is very accurate. It was very accurate for every other population except the Jews that did Ashkenazi. Is that the right one? The right area because can you hear me um the nail yes is yeah, that I, is that or do i need uh, to rewind it a little more yeah i i think that's it i think that's it okay oh, oh it it, just a, a a quick I, I don't know if i pointed out on this one but if, if you all look at the map <laughs> that's why i say because this one is the truth like the the evidence stacks up against them like if he was in the court of law this will be the one I come out of left field to, you know, the, to, 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 to point out, out that they, they, you know, that the glove don't fit. They must have quit, right? If you look at the little, the, you can't really see the words or the letters, but there are three green boxes off to the right. Three green boxes. And in those green boxes are the Y haplogroups, uh, or it's the locations that, that those Y, y haplogroups arise from. And if you remember, uh, Pastor Kelly showed you a list of the of haplogroups that were part of that study that made up the founder group. Right. So guess where those if you take those founder group haplogroups and you were to find it on this map, guess where it guess where you find it at. Kazaria. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Cuz. <laughs> yep. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. So here it is right here. We'll play it right now. In the world where it has originated, that technology did not exist. So once again, how do we locate people in the map without this technology? Well, again, we're by imagining those results. When I, when I, when I uh, developed this, this algorithm, this GPS, geographic population structure, Ashkenazic Jews were mapped to southeastern Turkey which was very peculiar. It was not Israel, it was not Khazaria, it was somewhere in Turkey that had absolutely no significance in, in Jewish writing and, and that we know of. Um, and I sent my postdoc to the library with, with a sandwich and, uh, and, and uh, spare socks, and I told him, don't come back without an answer. We need to understand why, this, why Jews are going to Turkey. The algorithm is very accurate. It was very accurate for every other population, except the Jews, that it, Ashkenazi Jews, of course, that it placed them in Turkey. He came back with a huge book like this. Wait a minute. He said he placed them where, guy, cuz?
The, you oh, still there, Benel? Yeah, yeah. Say he, again, he, Patrick. He said he placed them where in Turkey. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, like I hope Norton. the people caught on what he's saying. Yep. Yep. So I'll, 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 I'll keep it going. Oh, keep it. Yeah, go ahead. 600 pages of ancient uh, traveler uh, uh, journeys, uh, uh, documentaries uh, uh, that, that, that people walked around, just like Benjamin of Tudela. They walked around and they documented the place that they went. Um, so we could get a glimpse of ancient uh, villages and settlements that, that are not on the maps anymore. And in this book, we found four areas, all of them exactly where GPS pointed us, uh, settlements that do not exist anymore, only one survived, whose names derived from the word Ashkenaz. Wow. So we have Ashkuz, Ashanaz, Ashnaz, uh, Iskuz, um, and, and we all of a sudden from having no place in the world whose name derived from the word Ashkenaz, not Jews, Jew is easy to find. It's a very short word. It exists in other words. Finding a place that called Jew means nothing. Ashkenaz is a very long word. <laughs> from having zero places, all of a sudden we jump to four, all of them in the same place, all of them where genetics told us that it will be. And, and that place also fits with the place of the kingdom of Ashkenaz mentioned by Jeremiah. The kingdom of Ashkenaz was not Germany. Jeremiah was not prophesied that Germany would go fight Babylon. That did not happen. He didn't know where Germany was. So there is no way that Germany is Ashkenaz. Ashkenaz was and has been always Armenian and Iranian lands. Um, and, and this place where we found the Ashkenaz perfectly fit uh, the missing kingdom of Kenaz because you have Madai and you have the other kingdom, the Jeremiah prophet. And that's exactly the, the kind of groups. Now we, have, we can make a circle uh, of the kind of kingdoms that, that we're going to wage uh, Babylon. Not exactly happened the way he expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, eventually it was the Persians uh, who, who conquered the Babylons. But uh, is, hey, cuz is that where I'm, do I need to fast forward a little bit more? No, that's, did you want to say it. anything on it? That's, that's, that's perfect. Thought, that's okay. perfect. Yeah, he, he basically he's uh, what Doctor El Hike is saying is that you know when the, when he did his analysis, you know he tried he backtracked them to um, bi biblical Ashkenaz, like it, like I was telling you before, if you were to look at the t at the table of nations, get you like one of those uh, Bible atlases, and then and try to locate Ashkenaz on your Bible atlas, it would be just where he's saying like over in the um, uh, the Armenian area it's, it's just below the the um, the um, the Caucasus Mountains, the Caucasus Mountain Range is, is to the south. Of yeah. There. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. OK, OK, let's see. I'll play a little more here. I'm trying to get to that breakdown of the genetic distances. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that is, that is, though. Let me see here. Uh, let me fast forward here. I thought. Because I thought I, I know I asked him about it. You know, based off, off of your calculations, you were able to pinpoint them in, I guess, the, the location, if we're looking at the, at the location in the Table of Nations, it would be in the location of Ashkenaz. Exactly. It's exactly where you're stepping. It's uh, a little north to Lake Van, mm -hmm. uh, but you see the word Ashkenaz is there on the map. Uh, yeah. It's a little southwest from that. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah. It's it's right there. Yeah. And it's like I said, it's and it's interesting because I think so. Did you also do another study where you compare the DNA of, you know, I guess it was kind of like a like a genetic distance comparison, right? Where basically, you know, for those who, who may not be familiar with the, uh, genetic distance com comparisons, you basically, you know, you're comparing two people or two groups, you know, one to another and depending on how, if, if they're closely related, then the genetic distance value should be small. And, you know, Dr. Iran, you know, pre please correct me. <laughs> Feel free to correct me if I, if I misspeak. But if they're, if, you know, the closer they're related, the smaller the genetic distance value, like a it's mother and father or sister, brother, um, you know, their genetic distance value is going to be extremely uh, small compared to someone that's like a fourth or fifth generation cousin. Exactly. 
So when we take that and we extract like that and we apply that to, you know, to, to genetics and we're looking at populations around the world, Let's say, you know, and we take the Ashkenazi, we take the Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi, for example. And this is why I love, uh, uh, you know, I love the uh, comparison that you that you did because it's, it's one of those things where it's so obvious uh, that we should have done, you know, from the from the beginning. And that is, let's say, you know, let's let's take where you think you're from, and we'll compare your DNA to that place. But we're also <laughs> we're also take your DNA and compare it to this other place where I think you're from, you know, where, whether it be uh, Georgia or, you know, the um, biblical Ashkenaz, that sort of thing. And let's just see, you know, which one you're closest to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I may say, you know, as a researcher that you're from biblical Ashkenaz, you may say that you're from biblical, you know, Israel. Let's see which location you're closest to. It's like, that's just the easiest, simplest comparison that you can do. And when you run that comparison, and like I said, keep me honest here, I just want to make sure I'm representing uh, the, the research, but when you do the comparison, you find that over and beyond that, that, that the Ashkenaz population have a closer genetic distance value or closer relationship to biblical Ashkenaz. Is that a true statement? So when you do this kind of comparison, it's important to be honest. And when you read those studies, you have to read them critically because the easiest misconception to create uh, and, and to falsify is to exclude the population that are the closest to the test population and include only about the population that you want to show. So yeah. for for uh, years and years. Because did you want to explain that? Uh, because he made, sure. I mean, and I hope the people grab hold of that, is he's saying that the deception is, you know, sub- selecting who you really want to bring to the forefront in a nutshell. But do you want to uh, explain that portion of it, what he just pointed out about the approach to the test where that could be very uh, deceptive if you're trying to highlight a particular group? Yeah, I think I, I give a, an example af- after he, he makes that point, because um, yeah, it's, it's just basically whatever group you don't want to show up, just don't include them in the test. <laughs> you know, uh, if they don't want their um, if someone doesn't want uh, their uh, their um, Kazarian uh, uh, ancestors to show up, you know, just don't include it in the test. And that's and that's what Dr. Uh, Iran is saying that they've done. So they, just, they just simply pull out the, the regions that they know is going to be a, a, a hit or a match and they'll take that out and then they'll put in uh, some other region in there. And see, and think about it. Uh, where are we in these tests? <laughs> you know, right. right. That was, that's one of the, um, uh, the issues uh, and some of the um, research that I've done and even the book that I have, they didn't include no one but themselves. And most of it was, uh, you know, Europeans, you know, European uh, nations, you know, like Hungarian, Romania, and those type of groups, uh, Thrace, uh, some of the other places. So, okay, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll play play some more, a um, little more of the clip here. Years, Ashkenazic Jews were compared uh, to uh, Palestinians and to English. Right. They came closer to the Palestinians, hence the connection to, to Israel. But those were uh, just two people that are very different. And when you include populations like uh, Italians and Kafkazos people, <laughs> Georgians, Armenians, Jews would be closer to Georgians and Armenians than to Palestinians. Oh, I hope y'all caught that family. I hope y'all caught what he just said. Did you catch a bit? I know you already you already yep, know this. Yep, yep. <laughs> so basically, he's saying if you just include two groups, right, let's just say Georgians and Palestinians, of course, you're going to default and say that they're closer to the Palestinians. But when you start including the other groups there, then it's going it shifts from who you being more closer to the Palestinians to what those other groups. It, it, is that not what I heard? Um, Yep. yep. Uh, Jordans and, and Armenians like that. Like I said, they, those are the, the groups like uh, right below the Caucasus bound, just to the south of them. And that's where on the, the table of nations uh, map is where you'll see the, the biblical Ashkenaz. 
So, he, I mean, he's saying that the, the Bible is true. I mean, what's what's written in, in those uh, the pages of, of that book is true, fam. And so what he's doing is saying, if you're trying to um, point out a particular group to try to be connected to, number one, you minimize the others that you bring up. You know, again, if I uh, it, it like his to his point, if you just bring up the Palestinians in Georgia. You're going to lean to who the Palestinians doesn't mean that you have that is your closest match overall. But out of the options that you have, that's the one that you'll default to. Is, is that yeah. correct, uh, Benea? Yeah, well, I, I think you meant to flip it. Like if, if you if you were to uh, bring up the the Georgia, you know, Russia, Russia, Georgia and um, the Palestinians, uh, you would sh- or they would show up closer to Russian Russia, Georgia. OK, yeah, I thought he was yeah. saying that as uh, far as the selection would be leaning towards Palestinian. But you okay, it's, I got yeah, you. It, it would it would be Palestinian if they left it out. And that's and that's what if he was saying. Like, out, yeah. Yeah. They, they kept they kept leaving that leaving that out. And I think he said that also left out um, the Italians too, like the Italian. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. OK, so, yeah, I got they, you. And, I, and I'll play that part of, again just to make sure I didn't mess it. I mean, yeah. I know I'm, I butchered it. All right. So here we go. Uh, the, the research, but when you do the comparison, you find that over and beyond that, that, that the Ashkenaz population have a closer genetic distance value or closer relationship to biblical Ashkenaz. Is that a true statement? So when you do this kind of comparison, it's important to be honest. And when you read those studies, you have to read them critically because the easiest misconception to create uh, and and to falsify is to exclude the population that are the closest to the test population and include only about the population that you want to show. So for for, uh, years and years, Ashkenazic Jews were compared uh, to uh, Palestinians and to English. Right. They came closer to the Palestinians, hence the connection to, to Israel. But those were uh, just two people that are very different. And when you include populations like uh, Italians and Kafkazos people, <laughs> Georgians, Armenians, Jews would be closer to Georgians and Armenians than to Palestinians. But these comparisons were not done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 oh, I thought you were gonna say some cause. That, so that's oh. you inside the, the video. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but to your point, yeah, when he made the example of English versus Palestinian, you know what I mean? The more that you include, mm-hmm. the yep. accuracy you would get versus trying to uh let's just say apples to apples to oranges. You know what I mean? If you favor apples, you know. Uh, it and you just put an apple and an orange there, you would cater more to what the apple. But when you start putting other options up there, then that can kind of give more of an accurate of what's what is. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Now, if, I'm, yeah. if I'm butchering it, let me know. Oh no, no. I mean, and he he made the he made the a, a good point, and I, I kind of missed it when he when he first said it, but he made the point that um, you know, just just test against everything. Like stop holding you know holding some some groups out when they run the test it's like just throw all the groups in there and just see where the where the chips chips you know chips fall you know yeah and, and, yeah uh, and that, that way that way you, you would find out you know you you know you would find out exactly where you know the, the match is go ahead cuz and, and family to that point because i see a comment here and I, I i totally understand by black wire he says and what Palestinians are they talking about those that are there now or those who were the ancient people and that's a great point and that's where uh you know uh when you start getting into the areas that like uh, Benea pointed out testing everyone bringing all the results to the table because in the Jewish Act, they make it clear that you're not to um uh call a ancient Israelite a Jew and they say the same thing for the Palestinians. And I'll bring that up just to read it correctly. So they're saying it's incorrect to call a ancient Israelite a Jew. And it says, uh, and to call a Jew an ancient Israelite because they, uh, a, you know, 
they, they, the Jew may not have been Israelites at all. And then they'll say the same for the Palestinians. And basically saying the modern Palestinians versus the ancient Palestinians. And I believe in this interview, Aaron Elhake also talk, talks about how they're not testing everything or they're not releasing everything. And it's very limited to what you even see. Is that correct, Benaya? Yeah, on both the ancient and the modern, because I think to, to my brother's uh, question, you know, because there's there's kind of like you can you can there's a, there's a couple of different ways you can test. Like you can test against the people that's walking around today that's that's calling themselves Palestinian. Or you can test against the um, like the ancient DNA that they that they're able to extract from those archaeology sites. And so, you know, when they test against the people today, that's where Dr. Elhike is saying, you know, they're matching the people today over in, in Russia, Ger Russia, Georgia, or they're matching the people today that's over in Ar Armenia or whatever that, that area is called yeah. today. But there's also another match that, um, you know, that they're matching against, too. And that's the ancient DNA. You know, the people that's that's um, at those at those archaeology. Archae I don't know why I can say that word. Archaeological, archaeological sites. sites. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I butchered it myself, man. So <laughs> it's all good. We're, we're family. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so. Uh, so. So, yeah, family, I'm going to play some uh, uh because I really want you guys to hear that genetic distances, because you that that is so imperative to understand, because what Dr. Brown is saying is that the reason why you have all these different uh, variations and you have all these different uh, Y mutations. Well, actually, not just a mutation, completely different Y <laughs> uh, groups, haplogroups is because of marrying and, and basically adjusting to the communities that they travel to. So this is why you see, uh, you know, a, a Asian Jewish community, uh, a uh, Hungarian, you know, and so forth. So let me let me let me just place if we get there, then I'll I'll go to the source that I have as well that 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 gives clarity as well. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, finish your talk. <laughs> Um, so, so this is what my study did for the first time. It shows, let's compare two Palestinians, let's compare two German, let's compare to those Kafkazus populations, and these Kafkazus and Italian population came up. Now, when do some groups do compare to the Italians and they find the similarity, they dismiss it by saying, oh yeah, that was the Roman exile. What Roman exile? <laughs> there was I got to rewind it. Uh, Palestinians and to I got to rewind it because I hope people grab what he just said. I, I think that may go over some of you guys' heads. Here we go. Let me play it again. Listen very careful to what he just said. A closer genetic distance value or closer relationship to biblical Ashkenaz. Is that a true statement? So when you do this kind of comparison, it's important to be honest. And when you read those studies, you have to read them critically because the easiest misconception to create uh, and, and to falsify is to exclude the population that are the closest to the test population and include only by the population that you want to show. So yeah. for, for uh, years and years, Ashkenazic Jews were compared uh, to uh, Palestinians and to English. Right. They came closer to the Palestinians, hence the connection to, to Israel. But those were uh, just two people that are very different. And when you include populations like uh, Italians and Kafkazos people, <laughs> Georgians, Armenians, Jews would be closer to Georgians and Armenians than to Palestinians. But these comparisons were not done. To your point that you just pointed out, guys, he said, if you put it all on the table, yep. they're closer to what? Georgians yep, versus Palestinians. Yes, sir. And what, he, what, what he's doing is giving clarity to the report that uh, Professor Brown was making reference to that we read out. Yeah. He actually explained it, the, the, the errors in the approach with it. So that, uh, to your point, because uh, when we was reading from that initial document from Harvard, 
they weren't going into the specifics like when you said read the for example the russian portion of it with the eastern europe mm -hmm. you know you'll just see east europe but you don't see russia there right but then when you see the well, the, uh, the Scythians that Dr. Brown pointed out, they're where? Ukraine, Russia. And he <laughs> said that his, his, his uh, great-grandfather came from over there. Yeah, I mean, oh, I mean, and the, the uh, DNA report that he, that he read, uh, they're from Russia. <laughs> I mean, exactly. You know, you know, so it's, yeah, yeah, he's, but but like uh, to your point and what doctor just pointed out that you can basically what they're saying family that the error is making it say what you want it to say we can't do that because we don't own any of this stuff but they can make dna say whatever they want it to say depending on what you how, how you do your formulas is that correct cuz yeah, it's kind of like just they they stack the deck a certain kind of way to get get a certain result. So, yep. So let me see here. Let me play. Yep. Yep. So, 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 so oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your talk. <laughs> um, so, so this is what my study did for the first time. It shows. Let's compare two Palestinian. Let's compare two German. Let's compare two those. Kafkazus populations and these Kafkazus and Italian population came up. Now, when do some groups do compare it to the Italians and they find the similarity, they dismiss it by saying, Oh yeah, that was the Roman exile. What Roman exile? There was hmm. no Oh, did he just <laughs> he he didn't didn't he just address that too? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm sorry, cuz I'll play it again. I know I'm keep I keep stopping. No, but he's good, just good. saying. He, he basically, in a nutshell, he's just basically res where he's responding to what uh, Dr. Brown pointed out. Exile. The okay. Roman did not come to Israel in the year of 70 to, to, to exile population because they needed to people to pay taxes. That was far more important than taking how many people were exiled. They took people to, to, to <laughs> serve on their ship. They did not come with trains. <laughs> Right. Okay. Right. They had to go back to 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 to, to uh, Italy at some point. Okay. They cannot ex they cannot exile even if they wanted to a hundred thousand people because it would they would break the slave market. Okay. <laughs> it would create inflation in in the market. There was no Roman exile. This mm. is just one of those lies that we we're told at school. I was told at school. Uh oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh oh. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'll, I'll play it. Again. I'll continue. Yeah. Well, I, I, to your, so to your point, just to, just to make sure everyone is getting is getting the point. So let's say, for instance, if you know, I'm sure everyone remembers Jerry Springer, right? <laughs> well, and Dr. Iran, I'm not sure if you if you are familiar with Jerry Springer being, being from overseas, but there was this this show where you know uh, the question of who the father was. You know, when it came when it came to this you know this child, this illegitimate Ill, Ill, illegitimate or legitimate child. Uh, you know, they, the whole purpose of the show was to determine who was the father, you know, and so there would be this, you know, this gentleman that would be on stage mm -hmm. and they would try to figure out like, you know, if he was, if, if he was the daddy, you know, so to speak. And of course they go, go off and do the DNA test and the, 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 the climax of the show would be, you are the daughter, you are the father, or you're not the father, that sort of thing. But to your mm -hmm. point, let's say for instance, if you're trying to find the father of the child, so the easiest thing to do to not find the father is to not compare your DNA to the father. Exactly. Right? So you exactly. Would, instead you would compare it to five random people. You know, you could maybe you compare it to the uncle. Maybe you, could, you compare it to, you know, the friend, the milkman. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. You know, and you and you you run it and you say, oh well, look, we're not related. Exactly. You know, that sort of thing. But, exactly. But what you know, but what you know, you're doing, and, and what um, you know, I, I think that a lot of the uh, the community probably needs to start doing. It, that is, you know, run these comparisons against the right group. Make sure you're running the comparison against the right group, because when you do that, you can very easily determine who's who. And yeah. so I well, think compare it to all the groups, and then you find the right groups. That's right. 
all known groups. Uh, and the point about the, the Italian, just to, just to explain this, because it's not obvious, the similarity to Greco-Romans uh, can be easily explained by their shared past with, with where we have now Turkey. Remember, Turkey was conquered by, by, by Ita the Italian. They call it Constantinople. It was their, uh, their capital city. So south to the Black Sea, there were always Greco-Romans and Iranians, all of them mixed and these are the populations that their hybridization created the Ashkenazi Jewish genome. And because after they left this region, they avoided uh, mixing with other populations to, uh, to a certain degree, of course, they preserve this South Black Sea genetic signature that mm -hmm. allowed us to come back after thousands of years and trace them back to where they were. If they were mixing with other populations, this Black Sea signatures would have been, would have decayed, it would have disappeared. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And I, and I had a question to, to, to your point, uh, Dr. Because did you want to uh, elaborate on that real quick or you good? No, I mean, he, he, he perfectly laid it out because um, he basically said that they didn't mix, so their DNA stayed intact for the most part. And and that's the opposite of what Dr. Brown was saying. You know, he was saying, I mean, him and um, um, uh, Professor Henry Abramson were saying things like, well, they they mixed. And uh, that's why that's where you get this, you know, this European and this, you know, maybe the maybe Russian DNA. But um, you know, what Dr. Iran saying is like they didn't mix and their DNA stayed intact. And, and you know what's interesting? That's what the article that we read, it said from what the 10th century or yep. either the 10th or the 14th century moving forward for six centuries, mm -hmm. they didn't mix. Right. Yeah, per DNA. Like I said, D yeah, DNA is messing this thing up. Yeah, because they literally said in the article that uh, from the cell uh, source that for six centuries, was it, the cell, was, was it that one or was it the uh, the other one, I think it was the cell uh, that said that for six centuries uh, they didn't mix. I think it was the cell, either the cell or the initial one that I shared from Harvard. Hmm. Uh, I was pulling, seeing if I could see that. But yeah, I think it was the Harvard one that said for 600 years. Uh, yeah, even this one as well it says. Uh, despite uh, living 600, 600 to 700 years apart. No, that's not the one. But yeah, yeah, to your point. Um, yeah, that's that. Yeah, I, I think I left it in the other one. But yeah, uh, that one was just kind of confirming what, what, what was just said about the um, 600 years it says for 600 years can't remember which one it was but i was trying to get to it but anyway let me fast forward i think i was asked i did ask a question about the genetic distances because that's why I, I want him to really break down here we go oops wrong one i have a browser open here all right let's see here Getting these things mixed up. Here we go. Uh, especially with the discussion about the genetic distances and then some of the other, uh, you know, uh, if you want to call it um, theories that many came up with to try to, you know, confirm who's who. Uh, a lot of, I mean, it was just a certain targeted group in terms of with some of these uh, tests, like the genetic distances thing, like you pointed out, uh, it was, you know, uh, I believe it was uh, the Roman, I mean, Romanians, the Hungarians, uh, you know, it was a very selected group of people. And uh, so uh, with that being said, uh, do you, you know, uh, I want to ask a question about the other one that they had, the other, uh, I guess, uh, theory or hypothesis that they, that was out there about what is called the random genetic drift, you know, uh, would you be able to kind of, uh, get clarity on that. And then also, for me, uh, I believe the contradiction of the coho cohonine uh, gene is a little bit of a contradiction, especially if the Levites, uh, is, if Levi is one of the sons of Jacob, then all of them should have the same 
uh, white mutation, that of their father. But it, it, can you shed some light on that as well? Yeah, absolutely. So first, let me, uh, when uh, you see Ashkenazic Jews sharing high similarity to Romanians and Hungarians, this is because both of these populations were offshoots of the, of the Khazars. Um, they were both found. Oh, what did he just say, Cuz? <laughs> yes, sir. Did, 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 what did he just? I hope you guys grab hold of that. Mm -hmm. Let me let me just take it back just a little bit. He he slam dunked that right there. That was out there about what is called the random genetic drift. You know, uh, would you be able to kind of? Uh, get clarity on that. And then also, for me, uh, I believe the contradiction of the coho Kohonim gene is a little bit of a contradiction, especially if the Levites, uh, is, if Levi is one of the sons of Jacob, then all of them should have the same uh, Y mutation, that of their father. But it, it, can you shed some light on that as well? Yeah, absolutely. So first, let me... Uh when uh, you see Ashkenazic Jews sharing high similarity to Romanians and Hungarians, this is because both of these populations were offshoots of the of the Khazars. Um, they were both founded by by uh, these members of the Kafkazus who ruled uh, this area of uh, north of the Black Sea, where we have South Russia nowadays, uh, between the seventh and thirteenth uh, centuries. A uh, very powerful empire. They converted to Judaism in the eighth century, uh, and they sent offshoots to to Eastern Europe. Um, and we still some some uh, Ashkenazic Jews are mapped to this this region of Ukraine. They're not all mapped to to Ashkenaz. Most of them are, but some of them are mapped to Ukraine. And we can see very nicely some kind of migration route uh, using GPS. The second question you asked was genetic drift. Genetic drift is when we have these um, mutations that are by chance, that are random, uh, and they accumulate over time. Um, now, the more time passes, the more of these mutation, mutations accumulate. And if a tribe moves from one place to another, two things can happen. Um, they can maintain uh, marriage within that tribe, in which case they will preserve the original signature of the first tribe that they left and allows us to, to make connection between these two. The second thing, they can start mixing with the local environment, like almost always happens, and then they will for a while show a mixed signature. And then depends on the level of mixture, they will start moving toward the, 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 the hosting tribe. Um, but... Uh, if we're looking at the first strategy, uh, if they maintain marriage within the tribe, over a very, very long time, they will not be identical to the original tribe anymore because of this accumulation of random mutations that only happen in this tribe, but not in the original tribe. It happened in the original tribe too, but different random process. So they're not gonna be identical. And over time, they're just gonna be split. Now, the extension of these splits depends on how much time has passed. Um, and that's genetic drift. Now, in the populations that we're talking about, Ashkenazic Jews, that we're looking at 1,000 years, that's not enough time for random drift to create completely separate things. However, you mentioned it, and that's very good because it's a chance to refute another myth. Random drift has been used to explain why Ashkenazic Jews are different. When you compare them to the Palestinians, they don't look like Palestinians. When you compare them to English, they don't look like English. So they said, oh, yeah, they, they, because they married each other, random drift took its shot and created this, this, this unicorn. That's not true. They're just not being compared to the right populations where they came out. If you compare them. Did he just shut down what uh, we just heard from um, Professor Brown earlier, yep. um, Benea? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I think at the end of the day, because, I mean, it, it's it's pretty straightforward. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, DNA does does have the capability of getting getting complex and being, you know, hard to follow and stuff like that. But the truth of, of the matter when it comes to, um, you know, this research with, you know, Ashkenaz and Judah and stuff like that, it really just comes down to just comparing it to the right group.
that's it. I mean, it's not not a whole lot to it. And uh, there, the people that are trying to hide the truth are getting are they they up to the, up to now they've gotten away with it by, you know, uh, by swapping out those groups and no one's calling him calling them out about it. But now we are. So, you know, praise the Most High for that. You see, there you have family. Uh, that's that's where I w- w- really want you guys to hear uh, coming directly from uh, a geneticist, you know, because we can, uh, Benet and I can talk about it all day, but it's it's good to hear from a geneticist that actually put in the work, you know, and uh, can literally explain every aspect, every argument. And you just heard him literally say, in a nutshell, what uh, uh, Professor Mike Brown suggested uh, in this, and I'll just play the clip real quick. And I dropped the link in the comment section for anyone that want to come on. Uh, but here it is. I'll play this real quick. This uh, this contradiction. Here we go. As an Ashkenazi Jew, as a as a Jewish person with a mixture of European descent along the line, uh, here. Is- here is the actual study uh, uh, as, as posted on the Cell website. Again, highly regarded academic study. Genome-wide data from medieval German Jews show that the Ashkenazi foundry event predated the 14th century. And then it goes back and unpacks this further, tracing our lineage on, through, through the fathers back to the Middle East, back to ancient Israel. Uh, I continue. This is all what I presented briefly in the, in the debate with Gurley Hebrew. Subsequently, as Italians converted and married into Judaism, our European skin color became part of our heritage. Then, as these Jews made their way into other parts of Europe and settled there, the same process continued, explaining our Caucasian complexion. But the same process occurred with African Jews or Hispanic Jews or Asian Jews, all of whom reflect other people marrying into the people of Israel, hence the many different colors and ethnicities of Jews worldwide, in contrast with the original Browns. I got to stop that, because did you catch the nugget he said? Which one? (laughs) He said marrying into Judaism. Hmm. Because you know when you marry through Judaism, yeah, that's conversion. Let me play it one right. more time. I'm let me. I, I'll maybe I over. I'm. I'm. You know, sometimes I could overanalyze things as a a geek, but I'll play it one more time and I'll stop it at that point. You just let me know if if you heard what I heard. As an Ashkenazi Jew, as a as a Jewish person with a mixture of European descent along the line. Uh, here, here is the actual study uh, uh, as, as posted on the Cell website. Again, highly regarded academic study. Genome-wide data from medieval German Jews show that the Ashkenazi foundry event predated the 14th century. And then it goes back and unpacks this further, tracing our lineage on, through, through the fathers back to the Middle East, back to ancient Israel. Uh, I continue. This is all what I presented briefly in the, in the debate with Gurley Hebrew. Subsequently, as Italians converted and married into Judaism, our European skin color became part of our heritage. Then, as these Jews made their way into other parts of Europe and settled there, the same process continued, explaining our Caucasian complexion. But the same process... Yep. He said, "Marrying into Judaism." And he also said that that um, that the European skin color became part of their heritage. Exactly. <laughs> the European skin complexion became part of their heritage, and marrying into Judaism. He didn't say marrying into become you know a Jew. Hmm. He said marrying into a religion. Hmm. Right. And, you know, we could kind of get him with his own uh, with uh, Abramson because <laughs> Abramson made, makes it clear they determine their lineage based off of the women. 
Right. Yep. Absolutely right. You know, I mean, I mean, that's exactly what he said. And that's what how he denounced the Limbus from being Limbus because of that. Let me see here. I'll play it real quick. First of all, push aside the whole question of mitochondrial DNA, because when the Lemba women were tested, there was no similarity to Jewish women or Middle Eastern women. Their DNA was primarily similar to the African Bantu speaking peoples among whom they lived. It's useful to note that the Lemba are very, very strict about their patrilineal descent, but not their matrilineal descent. Men, in other words, cannot convert to become a Lemba, but a woman may. There's a lot of really rigorous, hazing kind of rituals that are associated with female conversion, including things like they have to crawl through an anthill and they have to eat these horrible emetics that cause them to vomit and that thus remove their impurities and really bizarre things like that. But in other words, the bottom line is that all Lemba men are the sons of prior Lemba men, but Lemba women can come from anywhere and can join the Lemba clan. And once again, that underlines the fact that by rabbinic status, the Lemba can't be Jewish because they don't have a matrilineal descent. Now, before we get too deep in the subject, we have to, first of all, lay down the ground rules that genetics are not identity. That genetics are not identity. That genetics are not identity. <laughs> yeah, it's not identity when he's trying to make a point. <laughs> you know, what, exactly. So you just you just heard how I mean they're contradicting themselves. Yeah. So they can literally, you know, straddle both sides of the fence. Yep. Yeah. He, you know, I, I I just think that this, you know, the, the DNA evidence that's that's coming out that has come out and that's getting ready to come out uh past kelly i think is is going to make make their um uh their argument more and more difficult because it's, it's interesting to see i don't know if you noticed but but their position has changed over probably probably within like the last year because over in the you know i'd say probably a year ago you'd be hard pressed to, to hear any of them talk about anybody uh any israelite being a person of color but now all of a sudden, you know, they'll admit it. And not only are they admitting it, they're admitting that Israel was was a dark skinned people or at least a person of color. And now they're having to try to explain the white skin. You know, and that's this whole thing about them. Oh, yeah, we came into Europe and we and we mixed. And that's that's you know, when we got our white skin heritage or however he he put it, you know. So they're having to to explain it. You know, that's because you know, all this information is coming out that Israel was dark. Except yeah. for, I will, I will say, uh, Dr. Henry Abramson, he's, he's still trying to hang on now, cuz. <laughs> yeah, cause he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, because he, he'll, he'll be like, yeah, they're dark, but they're, they're not your dark, though. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, see, that that's what actually, uh, what's his name? Um, um, Professor Brown alluded to that as well because he made reference to uh professor abram yeah. you know he he made reference to him and, and real quick family this is what i was saying about the genetic distances this is a great source right here uh it says here a large part of the study was devoted to the determination of genetic distances between different populations through this method genetic markers uh from different jewish populations are compared the smaller the relationship the more differences in dna may have arisen such dif dis differences are called distances. 75 Caucasian, in other words, white population, based off of nine markers. The genetic distance analysis showed that the East European Jews were closest to the inhabitants of Thrace, the region shared by Bulgaria, Greece, and Turkey. Bulgarian Jews came next, followed by 36 non Jewish population, uh, and only the second Jewish population, the Iranian Jews. Other results showed a large Italian component in the gene pool of the East European Jews. From all these results, it appears 
genetically, the different Jewish communities do not have much in common. Often they appear to be more related to the population in the midst of which they live. So I just thought I'd share that real quick. Any thoughts, cuz? I think you muted. Yeah, no, that I mean, that's all good points. All good points. So, yeah, I think yeah. You know, most I will, and I'll put a list together just, just so that people can see, you know, the the list of evidence that's stacked against anyone that's that's kind of pushing that that whole that that narrative about um um you know the the origin um you know as as far as like the the uh Ital you know the, the Italian origin uh story you know there that thing has all kinds of holes in it so most how willing we'll put put together put together a list to show that it's a a, a weak argument and that the um DNA really does put that to bed you know it, it makes it hard for anybody to, to have a conversation about it absolutely absolutely let me see who just jumped in here real quick cuz and then I'm not gonna hold you too much longer because I know you're probably tired like I am but somebody jumped on real quick and then we'll let them say say a few words and then we'll close out, let you get, you know, uh, seal the deal okay. if, uh, with anything else that you want to share. Aaron G, how are you? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Kelly. How, how are you doing? Bless, bless, bless. Appreciate That's you good. jumping on. Yeah, I just have a quick question. Um, I kind of caught like the last 10 to 15 minutes. Um, also, Shalom to the panel, Brother Benaya. Um, this question is kind of to Brother Benaya. Um, the video of the decree that you dropped yesterday with untangling all this, the way they twisted the DNA, uh, will any of like those documents be used in um because i i follow i went to google i did everything and i pulled it right up and i was like wow that that was my first time hearing about that decree yesterday and in listening to you guys i'm like i wonder if you know documents like that can be used also to untangle the the dna mess that they've you know that they've twisted you know what I'm saying? And and that's my question. That's that's all I wanted to ask. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think it's it's all gonna be well. Yeah, I think at the end of the day that all these, you know, documents, the DNA, I think it's all coming together to prove that, you know, that that we're the people. And and to your point, like the the whole decree about um, you know, the, the transatlantic slave trade, just for the benefit of those that, that, not, that may not be familiar with it, but um you know, when the transatlantic slave trade started, you know, most of the, the school textbooks, you know, they just they just talk about how, uh, you know, how the you know, transatlantic slave slave trade started. They kind of give a, a brief narrative about it, but they never actually read the decree that started it. I mean, it's it's kind of like one of those. Again, it's like one of those 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 things with like with that we found out with Aaron L. Hike was like the the most basic thing. <laughs> is what we should have been doing all along like you know mm -hmm. with dr aaron l hype you know we should have been comparing them to the right group you know and when when it comes to the transatlantic slave trade we should have at least read the the decree that started everything like exactly we just didn't think about it but and, it's like you, you, oh go ahead no sorry sorry i thought you was go ahead go ahead <laughs> no no i was just saying like but but in, in hindsight once you read it you find out that wait a minute man they're they're talking about jews <laughs> well, yeah you know but that's it that's yeah it. yeah and and when when uh speaking of that decree it a light bulb came on i was like out of nowhere that's where christopher columbus came out that I, i'm yeah. guessing that's when 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 that when that decree came out that was the go-ahead right and Christopher Columbus was probably one of the first ones to like, okay, we got the decree. It's time to go get them. Right. Man. But yeah, that's, that's, that's all I had, man. I just wanted to hop on, man. Appreciate the lesson, Pastor Kelly. Um, and you brothers be blessed. You too. Man. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Have a good night. You too. Yep. And enjoy the right or remainder of the Shabbat. You too. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.
All right, we got one more here. Don P. Pastor Kelly. Shabbat Peace and blessings. Shalom. Peace and blessings to you. Peace and blessings, my brother Ben Nai. Shabbat really shalom. Really appreciate the work you're putting in, my brother. Love, 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 love the uh, information, uh, infotainment, infotainment. <laughs> I appreciate the infotainment. I know, hey man, what you do um, takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of dedication. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you, you know, coming out with a a, a standard, okay, and not a that'll do. So really appreciate your hard work, Pastor Kelly. Appreciate your hard work, you know, um, in 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 working through these texts and bringing clarity um uh to things so that we have a greater understanding about who we are so that we can under put things in their correct historical perspective what i find very interesting about this whole thing is have you brothers ever been to russia no no i haven't have no thank goodness <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, it's 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 it's, it's actually it's, it's it's rather interesting. I've been there several times. Um, wow. Back when I was um, in the world and in the church, and you know, uh, I had a girlfriend that was Russian. Hmm. All right, man. All right, man. You're gonna have people looking at you like. <laughs> well, I mean, they can look at me how they want. Hey, we all have hey, a hey, path. Right. We hey, all have a path. Hey, hey. Right. How, how you do it? How you do it? <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh on that one. I was like, stop it. <laughs> but you find out some real interesting, interesting things, though. But um, was it you that did the um, the video on the um, Russian iconography? Yeah, I did one on it. I think Benet did one on that as well. Yeah, because, you know, you always see him, you know, yeah, you always see him as brown skin and stuff like that. So, I mean, I saw yeah, yeah. a lot of that. There. I saw a lot of that there. But the interesting thing to me was this. So the woman that I was involved with, she was a quote unquote Russian Jew. Hmm. And if we look at if we look at our captivities, look at <laughs> don't maybe put a, a stack of nickels on your train track. Right, there you go. There you go. I'm like, come on, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to hurt the brother. I'm right. still trying to figure out where that video is from. Yeah. And what it really is, is just like, is he's, he's just confused? Is that what it is? Is he dazed and confused? Right. But at any rate, no, actually, at any rate, actually, real quick, and I'll let you finish your thought. It's from um, a comedy skit with, uh, what's that, Peel and Kill or whatever. Mm. Uh, it's a, it, just look up the airplane scene from those guys and you'll get it. it it's it's man you don't don't watch that while eating okay. that. you will not feel you finish your meal so that's where i got it from i want to spill the beans but that's that's where i got it from so okay go, uh, so go ahead with your point because okay, i, I so don't want to hold up the name too much longer trip this in all of our historic captivities when you look around our remnant is still there because they didn't leave they're like no nah, i'm not going nowhere I'm not going nowhere. It's the same thing with them. Nah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm good here. I'm good here. I'm not going nowhere. Even after their empire fell and so forth and so on, and the Russes came in, they're like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I just started the book. I just started that book too, Pastor Kelly. Just want to let you know the origins of Ashkenazi Jewelry. Man, just even reading the forward is just like, wow. Okay, can't wait to get into this. And then I got the other uh, set of books uh, with the uh, Anglo-Saxons and their whole deal of trying to claim the Ten Tribes. So, you know, partially into that one. Um, that It's a double book series. So interesting stuff, man. Interesting stuff. The, 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 the scripts take on a whole different meaning when they pertain to you. Yes, it does. Absolutely. And that and that the history of the Khazars is a complex history. Like like to, so to your point, um, 
you know, one of the things that we, you know, I, you know, when we talk, started taking a look at the, the history of the Khazars, you know, most folks, you know, we know that uh, you're talking about the Caucasus, Caucasus Mountains and we're talking about people, you know, light skinned people. But to your point, there's also a such thing of uh, black Khazars. And I think you can actually mm. even find them in the um, in the Jewish encyclopedia. Mm. And so, you know, the first thing you, you want is like black Khazars in the Caspian, you know, the, in the Caucasus Mountains. What, you know, what's up with that? But so to your point, uh, there was, a, you know, there's a um, an oral tradition that the the northern kingdom, you know, um, you know, because, you know, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, they were kind of going back and forth. You know, they were beefing with, with each other throughout the, the Old Testament. But um, the northern kingdom went to the uh, Caucasus Mountains like that. That was one of the um, the um, oral traditions. And that when they went to the to the Caucasus Mountains, they also you know in, ended up teaming up with the white Khazars, you know, a.k.a. Mm. And, and that's why when I when I look in that region, I look at I, you know, most I wouldn't will bring it out, but I look at three groups in that area. And they're they're kind of all enemies of Israel to a certain extent. But you had Japheth, you know, Gog Magog. You mm -hmm. had Esau, you know, the descendants of Esau, you know, mm -hmm. the, the folks of, of Mount Mount Seir. And then you also had the uh, the Northern Kingdom, and they all three kind of combined into this this thing <laughs> that came out of that that area, mm -hmm. uh, that ended up persecuting us over the mm -hmm. years. And it, it's always been. What? It's always been the same. <laughs> Most I willing, we're gonna bring that out to show you that that the proof that it has been that same people that have persecuted us over the years is actually in your DNA. But that's mm. another that's a story for another day. But mm. what? <laughs> you you hit up on something really really important, and that see people tend to compartment compartmentalize history but they have to also remember that during that time was the ottoman empire and the ottoman slave trade which really you know focused on our people so there was a lot going on during that time uh sorry and you know i wanted to say this and i'll land my plane there um prophecy being fulfilled everyone wanting to return to their homelands. And so this is what Ukraine is about. Yes. Crimea and all that. And so once you understand these things, then it's like, ah, okay. All right. I see it. I see it. Now I land there. Yeah. Z Zelensky uh, is a, uh, they think they say he's a Russian Jew or a uh, Ashkenazi Jew. One of the, one of the two. Yeah, Russian. He's Russian. He's, He's Russian. Russian. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you know, that all historically belonged to the Rus, because it belonged to the um, the uh, uh, Khazaris. Yes. Yeah, and so yeah. I mean that that was uh, that's all their ancient territory. So that's what we're seeing. Well, um, I had a clip, um, but I had to take it down because uh, YouTube was um, about to strike me. Uh, it's amazing. I was able to upload the video, but I can't play any of the clips inside any of my videos. But Roseanne Barr, uh, even though she was yeah. getting a lot of flack, she made it clear when she was dealing with uh, what's that guy name? I can't remember the the what's the, I know, what's I the white the guy that did the interview with? Um, uh, I can't Bill think of his Bill name. Maher. Wasn't Bill Maher? Uh, it was, no, um, it wasn't Bill Maher. I uh, can't think of his name, but yeah. But anyway, she was letting him know that. And she called it out. She was like, yeah, she was like um, the that what's his name over Ukraine is uh, a Ukrainian Jew. And that's when she said not all skin folks are kin folks because she was mm. saying how uh, there were uh, uh, soldiers wearing. Uh, yeah. Piers Morgan, that's his name. I appreciate okay. it. Oh, Sister Carol, but uh, wearing uh, swastikas and all kinds of other things that associated with Hitler uh, in those armies on that, like patches and things along that line. Have you guys have you guys been to um 
like to Germany and some of the other countries and the um, concentration camps? No, I haven't oh. been to the concentration camps. I've been to Germany, been to uh, what's that, Bitburg, um, you know, from my military time. Right, 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 right. And I, I will say, right. yeah, when I was younger, you know, when you're young, you're not really thinking about those things. I wish hindsight 2020 when I was over in Iraq and all those places that I would have taken advantage of from that perspective, but no. You know what? I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share my um my collection of photos with you guys. Um, so I went to I went to school in Europe, and when we were on this trust building um uh, exercise, we went to a concentration camp that was in you know the former Soviet Union. I think it was. I think it was in Slovenia, but then also um I've been to the concentration camps in like, you know, I believe it was Auschwitz and whatnot. Um, interesting stuff, especially with what we kind of know about the information that's in the side guys right now, you know, things that have been revealed over the last couple of years. So really interesting. I, I would love to share those photos with y'all and let y'all check those out. Okay. Yeah. Re sure. Reach out to us offline. Um, shoot yeah. me an email, shoot me yeah. an email. We'll go from there. But um, yeah. anyone you want to throw in the garbage can? My favorite little bald head boy. You know who he is. What's his name? Uh, uh, Mr. ADL. Oh. oh. <laughs> Jonathan Greenblatt. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and toss it. Head first. <laughs> All right, peace and shalom, my brothers. All right, peace All right, shalom. shalom. Appreciate it. All right, cuz, really appreciate it, man. I know we uh, covered a lot and um, yeah. really appreciate you giving clarity on some of the um, articles that I shared, uh, uh, catching some of the things that I didn't catch, especially with the breakdown of that second article, that list that really gave a breakdown of the different groups that they did the testing on when you identify with the Russia, Russian portion of it. And um, so, yeah, yeah, you, you've you been unpacking this this stuff big time. But, um, you know, uh, did you want to, you know, uh, summarize what we talked about with the people and, you know, any uh, additional thoughts that you want to give them before we wrap up? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I think at the end of the day, because uh, I think it's it's a it's a wrap. I mean, as far as our our, um, you know, the information. That's out there uh, proving who that we are the people and, the, um, you know, with the uh, this information that Dr. Brown and um, Professor uh, Henry uh, Abramson are trying to are trying to put out, you know, as far as like the um, the, the history of the of the Ashkenaz, I think that that is being refuted using DNA, you know, the whole narrative about, the you know, this migration from you know, from um, from Italy up into Germany, you know, that I think that that's being uh, disproven by by DNA. And um, this and, and the proof is, is, is the way that they try to use the article to justify that narrative. And what we're finding out is that when they try when they reference the article, they leave stuff out. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what happened to the, to the other group, to the other uh, founder group that was now that came from Russia? They don't, they don't even mention that, like we were saying before. So anyway, but that's the only way family that they, they, that they can kind of make their argument is just kind of leave stuff out, you know, uh, leave groups out when they try to compare stuff with DNA. You know, um, it's funny because Dr. Abram, um, Professor, Professor Abram. He had the he he had the audacity to to refer to the Lakesh relief because that's one of the things I, I bring up all the time that say like even a two year old can look at the Lakesh relief and see the nappy headed uh, people with you know with um you know wooden, short nappy woolly hair with the beard and the hair and to see that they are Negroid people but then of course he looks at it and says when he shows it on his channel he doesn't show the nappy woolly headed people he actually shows somebody with the hair covered that has a hat on that's covering up the nappy woolly head. And it says, well, look, they'll, they'll, that's your <laughs> medic right there, you know? Yeah. And he doesn't show the nappy willy head guys at all, you know? So it's it's like little sleight of hand stuff like that. They're doing it all the time. 
and because we're, we're waking up we're you know we're catching it so praise to the most high man um you know they'll i'm sure they'll keep trying but we'll, we'll keep calling them out absolutely absolutely and, and i really appreciate it again you hit you you hit um a number of things out of the park uh tonight and i'm sure that people appreciate it especially with um the playing that uh what's that the the interview that was done with um uh professor el I, I mean he he just gave so much uh information that and i hope and pray that you guys uh go over to uh my cousin benaya's channel if you're not subscribed to it subscribe to it but go look at that uh that that video because uh just from the clips that we share he shared a lot more information but he he really really slam dunked it i mean really slam dunked it you know so uh but yeah definitely appreciate it uh uh because uh any additional things you want to share with the people anything you got going on that you want to want to uh give the people a heads up oh yeah just thanks for for invite, inviting me on uh pastor kelly appreciate it and um yeah just uh i think we'll most high willing we'll, con we'll continue the uh the look into the history of the of the Ashkenaz, most high willing like i said uh because there are some interesting things as far as dna uh and our dna as far as you know so-called african-americans that i think uh their world will be shocked to find out so we're going to most high willing we'll take a look at that in the next uh day or so and um yeah that's it everybody have a great uh great uh shabbat oh and you know what guys before i let you go have you heard of this i think i told you about this book picture history of the jewish civilization have you seen that book yet i don't think so yeah. okay okay that's i have to forward that over to you i'll put it on the screen real quick uh has some great information here let me see how uh and i'll let you go i just thought i'd mention that to you let me remove this if it lets me then i'll share it if not we'll let you do the garbage can tonight <laughs> and then i know you got plenty <laughs> you had to probably have to put a few garbage cans out there all right here it is so uh as you see here these th these are some of the images uh from the book this is showing the egyptians here uh as you see in the 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 bottom i can't really read it all but it says like the can i read the bakeries yeah the bakeries of which one man built the flour so it's giving some information on that but it's some some good information in there as far as like with the ancient people you know um some images about the um the Babylonians, but let me see. Here's another one here. Uh, oh, wow. You, you, you see those pictures of the Egyptians on the bottom left? It looks like Egyptians. Yeah. Oops, yeah. Let me go back. Yeah, Professor um, uh, Henry Ab Abramson, what, what he did was that on, you know, when he was talking about the trying to show the, the Israelites in Egypt, you know, making those bricks. You know, yeah. he, he actually picked out the pictures where the paint was faded. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, he, he picked out the ones that were faded. It's like, yeah, well, it looks like there were, there were two people down in uh, Egypt. You know, the one was light skin mm -hmm. and one was dark skin. And it's like, oh, it's like no, one is faded and the other's not. <laughs> and you can tell because if you zoom in on it, if you get a high quality um, uh, HD, you know, high definition uh, picture of it, you know, from like uh, Shutterstock or something like that. You can actually see that that it's faded because there's there's a couple of characters where half his body's dark and the other half is light, you know. So anyway. And, and it looked like they got froze. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't have they don't have the long the long uh long hair is all short. Yeah, but did this to your point though, uh confirming what you just pointed out. But yeah, this is, you know, got some great information in it. And I'll forward it over to you. Look, you know, look at that Negroes. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, and this is saying here, um, thousands of war captives were, who were transferred into slaves made it possible for the Egyptian kings to implement their uh, feast of engineering. I'll give some additional stuff, but you see the uh, Negro appearance. Yep. You know, and then uh, another image that you was making reference to at the bottom over here. The Egyptians in showing, you know, in the slaves. So, and but then also this right here to the right. I'm not sure if you can see that. Hmm. Yeah. Let me slide over here. Yeah, stuff you have to really, really, really dig for as we discovering that they're not just gonna put stuff in our face. In some cases, they do have it in our face. In some mm. of these museums, but you know, they just have it so that way many of us are turned off by museums. You know what I mean? That's not mm -hmm. something that you think of, hey, let me go to the museum. When mm. actually we, you know, we'll go everywhere else but a museum. And we <laughs> need to start going to some of these museums. Mm. So just thought I'd share this with you. Um, I I'll share the source with you. Okay. Um, and I'm sure you can, you know, extract some good information out. Okay. Yeah, appreciate and it. So so, yeah, with that being said, um, family, I want to uh, let Benea give you guys the final uh, words here before we uh, wrap it up here. Any um, final thoughts you want to share with the people, cuz anyone you want to throw in a garbage can or anything like that as we get ready to uh, call it a wrap? Yeah, just all those that, that keep trying to perpetuate the lie and uh, praise to, the, to be the most high that that's, is bringing out the truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you. And family, we're just going to, uh, in the garbage can, we're just going to throw all those that keep bending and twisting and spreading these, um, these falsehoods, you know, these lies, as um, uh, ben Benaya pointed out, you know, it's a lot of them out here. It's a, it's a mountain, you know, mountains, mountains of lies that we've been uh, dealing with as a people. So with that being said, Go back over and look over at the um, re, um the the video again. But I encourage you guys go to um, uh, Benai Israel's um, YouTube channel and look at some of the latest uh, projects that he's uploaded. And um, he also has the full video under the video section of his page of the interview with Aaron uh, El I always mess his name up, but Aaron El uh shutting down every argument that we've heard tonight. Uh, so with that being said, and the words of Moses, well, actually the most high given to Moses in Exodus chapter 13, verse, I mean, Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, he said, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. These Egyptians that you see here today, you'll never have to deal with them ever again. The most high will fight for you, but here's the kicker family. We have to hold our peace. Can't go back. Can't stay here. Keep moving forward. Listen, Genesis chapter 11, verse 10. Explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13. Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the father. Jacob had 12 sons. For real, and these were the children of Israel, according to Genesis chapter 10. These were the children of Israel.